Mu Yun explained to Tang Yun that this item was very important to her and asked him to give in to her, and in return, she promised to thank him in the future. But Tong Yun refused to give in to her and said that he needed this item as well, and that he was also willing to thank her in the future if she backed down. Because of the rejection, Mu Jun felt an anger coming up and said their money would decide everything. Lingu Chang He regarded Tang Yun as nothing but an arrogant chump, and he wondered how far he was willing to go after what he had said. The Soul Beast Head felt that Tang Yun's tone was as powerful as the powerful cultivators from the Immortal Sect. And if his guess was correct, he could now understand why the latter dared to behave like this with Linghu Kang He and Mu Yun. Meanwhile, the Head of the Five Souls couldn't even guess who would receive the Celestial Meteoric Iron because of an unknown person. Tang Yun believed that the Violet Sea Flame would go to him since by combining Bing Ching's Spirit Stones with his savings, he had about 60 million. Not intending to give the stranger the flame Mu Jun upped the ante to 22 million. Immediately after which, Tang Yun raised the bet to 30 million. Mu Jun raised the bet again by 2 million. She was angry at the thought that she had about 40 million left. Tang Yun raised the bet to 40 million and asked her not to test her fate as this figure was just a trifle to him. He felt that Mu Jun should give up since even the head of the alchemy division had 40 million. The guests suspected that Mujun's situation was dire as the unknown person had raised the bet by 10 million, while Mujun had only raised it by a few million, so they could already figure out who would receive the purple sea flame. Mujun raised her trembling hand and tried to raise the bet again, but the head of the beast soul advised her to end it, as it clearly wasn't worth it. Realizing the situation she was in, Mujun agreed with him and admitted defeat. After which, Tandai Junde congratulated Tang Yun for acquiring the purple sea ghost flame. He was pleased that he had decided to let it go to auction after all, as they would be able to get a great deal of money. The guests realized that even such a rich man was unlikely to be able to escape the sect heads after the auction, unless he had a trump card for this occasion. Tan Dai Jundi clapped his hands to attract attention and announced the next lot of top quality soul pills suitable for soul cultivation. The value of one pill was a hundred thousand spirit stones. Upon hearing about the pills, the guests went off the chain as most of them had come to the auction just for the pills that could help them break through to the next stage. One of the bottles Fang Jian was able to get his hands on, he was pleased with the purchase as he would surely be able to defeat Tang Yun with the pills. Tang Yun noticed the old acquaintance and recognized that there was no way he expected to see him here. But since that one is here, he can finally get it over with right after the end of the auction. A member of the auction staff reported to the deacon that the lady was requesting his presence. Thoth was surprised to hear this, but still went to her leaving the next lot to the female employee. Watching the auction from the backstage, Madam wondered if the guy on the second floor was really from the Immortal Sect, for she had never seen him before. Immediately after which Tan Dai Junde interrupted her thoughts, he asked how she had returned so quickly. After all, she was about to head to the secret realm, to which she replied that it was rumored that there was supposed to be a sacred elixir of life in a secret realm. But when she arrived, she found that it had turned to ashes. The deacon explained to her that the sacred elixir of life was clearly not something that could be found so easily, and so he advised her not to dwell on it. Madam suggested not to dwell on it, and asked uncle what kind of guest was on the second floor of the auction house, since he dared to argue with the two elders so easily. The deacon replied that their guest had introduced himself as the mentor of the head of the Bingqing Alchemy Division. He allowed the guest to pass since he had shown her badge, but just in case, he still sent people to the alchemy division to find out more about it and see if it was true or false. The head of the auction house admitted that she had never heard of the alchemy chapter mentor and decided to leave him alone for now. Right after that, she shouted that she had figured out a great way for them to make money. She was going to raise prices so they could make a fortune. But the deacon immediately objected to this because if anyone found out about it, their reputation would be ruined. Mistress asked how anyone would be able to figure out that she was the one doing it. Tan Dai Junde tried to reason with her, but she turned around and said to stop it since she was just kidding. Tan Dai Junde hoped that she wouldn't do anything weird since the patriarch had spoiled her, causing her to become too playful. Two hours later, Tan Dai Junde announced the last item in today's auction, after which he pulled down the cloth and shouted out, Comprehensive Celestial Purple Meteoric Iron. The guests were shocked, as this kind of iron could be used to create a saint-level weapon, and it couldn't be found so easily. To say it was priceless would be an understatement. Even Tang Yun didn't expect it to be the celestial violet meteoric iron. After all, it was the most ideal material for his flying sword, which meant he had to get it. Upon seeing the iron, Mu Jun immediately ordered her subordinates to submit all of her spirit stones. The beast soul head ordered his subordinates to submit everything they had, 
as he wanted to take the iron regardless of the price. The head of the five souls, on the other hand, had even ordered to rob people if he didn't have enough stones, after which he would personally take full responsibility. Tandai Junde laughed and shouted that everyone should understand how much such an item should cost. So he decided not to pull the cat by the tail and let them determine the starting price themselves. Immediately afterward, arguments and bets of 30, 40, 45, and even 50 million were heard from the second floor. Even the students were shocked that the price went up so high before they could even blink. They then noticed that the mystery man was holding his tongue and assumed that he had run out of money. Tang Yun didn't have enough spirit stones, which meant that he could only exhibit that formula. Hence, he decided to break his silence and raise the price to 100 million spirit stones. The heads could not believe what they heard and even thought that he was joking. The head of the five souls shouted that he wouldn't have that much money even if they sold him. Mu Jun said that 100 million is not the smallest amount and asked if he really had that amount. Rubbing his beard, Ling Hu Kang He asked Tang Yun if he knew that he wouldn't be able to get out of the auction alive if he didn't pay the lot. Tang Yun grinned and asked him to take care of himself first before calling the heads as peasants. The insult caused a flame to light up in Mu Yun's eyes, and she called Tang Yun a creature and warned that she would have already killed him if they weren't at the auction. Ling Tsang He threatened Tang Yun that he would be one foot in the grave if he left the auction. Tang Yun asked the deacon if he would get an iron if his bid could not be outbid by anyone. Tan Dai Junde asked Tang Yun not to worry and asked who was willing to bet more. The guests were shocked by the stranger's price, because even if they sold everything they had, they wouldn't be able to get so many stones, and the elder would only be able to compete with him if they united. The deacon began counting down to the sale of the lot when suddenly one of the guests asked him to stop, after which the head of the Huan Fu auction house bid 110 million spiritual stones. Seeing her, sweat poured from the deacon's forehead as the head got into trouble. Tong Yun, on the other hand, only hummed. He was slightly surprised that there was someone here who could compete with him. The disciples were shocked that someone else had raised the bid. After all, there were too many even too rich people gathered here. And if the bid continued to increase, the cost of meteoric iron would skyrocket. Tandai Junde tried to mentally ask Madam what she was doing here. After all, she had promised that she would not get into trouble but she replied that she had decided to have fun. Besides, she had made a promise earlier, but they needed to live in the present, and she wondered how far the person on the second floor could go. The head asked Tang Yun what happened since he stopped raising the bet. After all, with such an outcome, the meteoric iron would belong to her. To which Tang Yun replied that he would bet again, and this would be his last bet. Then he shouted that no matter how much the others bet, his bet would always be 10 million higher. Looking at the girl, Tang Yun assumed that she was from a sacred or immortal sect since she was too young, yet had a similar amount of money. He realized that she had deliberately provoked him to see his limit, and if that was the case, he didn't mind teasing her. The students started shouting that he was crazy and that you can't throw that kind of money around like that. They wondered if he was joking because if someone bets a billion, they are bound to go bankrupt. The head asked if he was trying to mess with her as there was no way she was willing to believe he would have that kind of money. Tang Yun admitted that she was right, and he didn't have that many spirit stones. And after buying the ghost violet sea flame, he had about 20 million left. Immediately afterward, the head asked how he dared to bet such sums if he didn't have any. Besides, she thought he was an elder from the immortal sect, but as it turned out, he was some kind of freak. Then she ordered her uncle to call the guards, and he listened to her. As soon as the deacon called out to the guards, those guards entered Tang Yun's room in the next instant. Ling Hu Cheng He scoffed at Tang Yun because now he wouldn't have to dirty his hands since this guy was already dead. Mu Jun noticed that the stranger remained calm after the guards entered, which made her suspect that he still had a trump card up his sleeve. Tang Yun asked why the head of the Huan Fu Trading Company was raising the rates because she must be raising the price for personal gain. The head tried to reply to Tang Yun, but she stammered for a moment, right after which she shouted that she was only trying to expose him. Tang Yun said that although he didn't have the right amount of stones, he had something he could replace them with. The head snickered and said that she doubted the one would have anything equivalent to a sky purple meteorite iron. The students began to discuss loudly the fact that this item was really priceless and that the stranger only said this because he was nervous and bluffing his way out. Tandai Junde asked to be allowed to look at what would allow him to replace the spirit stones to determine the value and swore by reputation that it would be a fair judgment. Tang Yun agreed with the deacon and threw the sheet to him from the window. Looking at the contents, Deacon Tandai Junde was shocked by what he saw. Seeing the uncle trembling, the head asked what it said, to which the latter replied that she should see for herself. Whereupon he handed her the sheet, 
In turn the head said she didn't mind taking a look at what the suspicious type was offering. But looking at the sheet, she couldn't contain her surprise as it was the formula for the sacred elixir of life and shouted it out. Tandai Junde immediately reacted and covered her mouth asking her to be quieter. The students were shocked as they could not believe what they heard. Because the elixir of life is a legendary elixir, the formula of which disappeared many years ago, and its traces were found only in some ancient secret kingdoms. The last elixir appeared 200 years ago, when the Huangfu Trading Company auctioned it off. Back then, even people from the immortal and saint sex came to bid. The final price was unprecedented, but that was just a pill, whereas now, they had seen the formula. If it turns out to be real, then its price must be priceless. Upon hearing about the elixir, the division heads immediately rushed to Tandai Junde to have a glimpse of the formula and wanted to see if it was true. Tandai Junde urgently announced the end of the auction and said that they could all go home before pushing my lady towards the exit of the stage. Immediately after that, the heads swooped down on him. They were going to see this formula even on the condition of becoming enemies of the trading company. The disciples were shocked as this was the first time they had seen elders move to such a fight without caring about their image. They even wondered if these were really the same powerful leaders they knew. And besides, the person on the second floor was really incredible since he was able to make the elders fight each other over the formula. Tang Yun asked what was wrong with them after all. It was just a formula for the sacred elixir of life. Whereupon an employee of the trading company approached him and reported that their mistress wished to speak to him about the sacred elixir of life. Tang Yun pointed at the elders and asked what would happen to them, to which the latter replied that he had nothing to worry about and that the deacon would surely deal with them. After which, she led Tang Yun to the inner Huangfu trading hall. Tang Yun asked the head of the auction house why she didn't show up herself to discuss everything. After all, he doesn't want to waste his time here. She replied that she had lost track of time as she was mesmerized by the formula and apologized for the oversight. Tang Yun chuckled and asked if he could exchange the formula for the lot. The head explained that it wouldn't be a problem if the formula was real. But no one had seen the formula of the sacred elixir of life yet, so they needed time to check the truthfulness of the formula. Tang Yun asked how they were going to test with the formula, and the head explained that they had all the materials they needed, and all they had left was alchemical skills. Because of which, she's afraid that he'll have to wait a little longer. They will give him the meteoric iron once they are sure the formula is authentic. And while the guest waits, she'll have a chance to find out who he really is, because the way he's given them this formula, she's really intrigued in the man in front of her. Tang Yun asked why they were going to all this trouble and asked her to just give him everything he needed. He had already guessed her plan. Handing over the ring, the lady asked if he had any doubts about the quality of their materials, because if so, it's not worth it as she is personally ready to guarantee that all materials are of the highest grade. Taking the ring, Tang Yun took out all the materials and began to condense them with his flame. The head demanded that he stop and stop destroying items. But Tang Yun asked her to step back and not interfere with him, while repelling her with flames. The head felt that the stranger was taunting her with such alchemy, and besides destroying her materials, he also dared to turn his flames against her, which he wouldn't get away with. Immediately after which, Tang Yun finished creating the pill and offered her a glance. The head was shocked that a stranger had created a pill in such a way. In addition, according to ancient records, the success rate of refining the sacred elixir of life was less than 1%. Tang Yun asked if she wanted to test the pill and threw it. Mistress immediately caught the pill and asked him to be careful as you can't just throw such things around. After which, she started to look at what the pill looked like. Tang Yun said that he didn't have time, and since she checked the pill, let her give him the meteoric iron. The lady agreed, but asked him to wait for a while, after which she called Uncle Dia over. A few seconds later, a battle-stricken Tandai Junde entered the room. He said he felt like the elders had gone crazy. They almost ripped out his mustache but he was lucky he could run fast. The head asked her uncle to test the elixir since he had encountered something like this before. She then explained to Tang Yun that her uncle was using a cognitive framework that could determine the composition of an item, its quality, and anything else he wished, so he could easily check if it was real. After staring at the pill for a few seconds, Tandai Junde shouted that it was simply impossible. The head asked what had happened. She suspected something was wrong with the pill. Tandai Junde continued to examine the pill and tried to understand how it was possible. The head knew that the pill could not be made something so simple, which meant it was flawed. She asked Tang Yun how he dared to give them a fake formula, and regardless of who he was, he would pay them for this prank. To which Tang Yun replied that it was only a formula, 
and that he wasn't so bored as to tamper with it. Tang Yun didn't consider the sacred elixir of life as something special, as his past life was the source of the Nine Lives and its constant flow. Just one sip from it could extend life for a whole thousand years, while the best pill could only extend life for a hundred years. The head got angry at the insolent reply and shouted that he would learn the power of her wind and thunder talisman. Immediately afterward, Tandai Junde asked in a panic what she was going to do, to which she replied that she was going to teach the stranger a lesson that he would not forget for the rest of his life, for if she hadn't heard, there was obviously something wrong with the pill. Tandai Junde was surprised by her words, and rubbing his head said that he had never even thought of such a thing while embarrassing her. He then whispered to her that the pill was real, and that he was actually shocked by its superior quality. And as she should know, such pills would extend life by a hundred years. For the strongest cultivators at the end of their lifespan, this was the most necessary thing. And if used properly, their profits would be incalculable. When she heard this, she got angry at her uncle and asked if he could have told her this earlier, because she had already gotten the wind and thunder talisman and almost messed up. The deacon asked her to stop it as there was a guest looking at them. After which he deeply apologized to Tang Yun as his reaction was ambiguous, due to which he was misunderstood. Tang Yun told them to stop talking, and asked when they would give him the celestial purple meteorite iron. Tandai Junde asked the guest not to worry about it and pulled the meteoric iron ring to him. After receiving the ring, Tang Yun said that although the celestial violet iron was a valuable item, but it wouldn't be enough for the formula of the elixir of life. Moreover, he had already made a pill of the best quality and as he realized, they were a reputable auction house. Slightly dejected, the deacon agreed with Tang Yun, and asked how much more they needed to add. Tang Yun held out the sheet and explained that it had everything written on it. He wrote down the items he needed to make his own flying sword. Since it would be quite a hassle to collect them, he decided to just leave it to others. Taking the sheet, Tandai Junde named the contents from the list. Supreme Dark Golden Iron, Supreme Thunder Bamboo Tree, Supreme Water Bamboo, Supreme Water Frost Sand, Supreme Earth Spirit Roots, Ancient Dust, and Thousand Year Light Crystal. The head said that these items were not as valuable as Meteoric Iron, but they were too rare, causing the total price of the ingredients to be too high. The head said that he was just trying to capitalize on them, and that the sacred elixir of life, though a valuable thing, was only effective once, and to exchange it all for one pill would be too greedy. Tang Yun chuckled and told him that there were many mortal cultivators in the sect, and that if he brought them this elixir, those would pay him much more, and it would only be for one pill. After hearing this, the head got angry and said that they were just old monsters, and the likes of them would do anything to get that pill. To which Tang Yun replied to her that if they were all monsters, then he must be the very devil in her eyes. The head ordered her to stop saying such a thing, for even her father would not dare say such a thing. The deacon asked them to stop squabbling and told the guest that they could only give him five items from the list, or they would suffer a loss. Tang Yun offered to give them all these items within a year, and in return, he was willing to give them the formula of the life element pill. The deacon and the head were shocked at what they heard, for it was even better than the elixir of life. Tang Yun warned them that he didn't have much time, and that he would wait for these items for a year after which he would give the formula, and if they couldn't get it to him, he would look for another person. Tang Yun wasn't going to linger here any longer since judging by the time the auction was already over, and if they continued to delay him, Fang Jiang would once again manage to leave, and there was no telling when Tang Yun would meet him again. Not wanting to lose the formula, Tan Dai Junde said that they would be able to get these items even if they had to travel around the world. He promised this since life element pills can greatly increase a person's vitality. Even though they were weaker than the sacred elixir of life, their uses were much more varied, making this deal very favorable. After agreeing, Tang Yun said he had some business to attend to and said goodbye, as suddenly, the deacon asked Tang Yun to stop since they, immediately afterward the head fenced the deacon and said that all was well, and that henceforth their auction would be his faithful partner, and that he could at any time let them know if he needed anything. Tang Yun said that he would take it into consideration, but in reality, he realized that the head was plotting to play mind games with him. Tandai Junde asked why she didn't let her tell her guest about the secret exit. After all, the elders of the inner sect were waiting for him outside, and if he went out, a clash could not be avoided. To which the lady replied that it was no big deal, and they could handle it. Tandai Jundi began to guess what my lady wanted. The head explained that this man was a real treasure, because he could make the elixir of life pill and the sacred elixir of life. 
so it was beneficial to them if they fought, because if he was really as strong as he seemed, they would become reliable partners. But if he can't do anything to them... Tandai Junde praised Madam's plan and said that they needed to be prepared for both outcomes. If the stranger wins, they will strengthen their relationship for the sake of gain, and if he loses, they can take everything he has. Mistress recognized that always, knew that uncle could be relied upon, but, and she needed to find a good place to watch. Outside the Huanfu Trading Company, the disciples were trying to figure out what had happened, because there were elders standing at the entrance of the company, and from the looks of it, those elders were not in the mood and want to put up a fight. One of the students asked his friend to be a little quieter as he doesn't want to get involved in something like this. Lingu Tsanghi told them that he was waiting since that rude man on the second floor had insulted him and asked the elders why they were waiting for him. Muyun asked him to stop talking like that because they all know why he's standing here. Tandai Junde is gone and none of them want to cross Huangfu Trading Company. And if they want to get the elixir, they need to deal with the mysterious man, after which they will discuss their share. The other chapters immediately agreed to the robbery since there was a chance that the mysterious man had more than just the formula for the sacred elixir of life with him. Ling Hu Tsanghi has agreed to participate in their case, except he wants to personally deal with that person. Mu Jun was fine with that, but asked that he not kill him too quickly. Looking at the elders, the head of the trading company realized that everything was ready. All that was left was to wait for the last actor. After a moment, laughter could be heard behind the backs of the elders. Tong Yun said that he was very pleased when he met such important people. As soon as Ling Kang he saw that person, he immediately jabbed his finger in his direction and called him a bastard. Tong Yun's eye glittered red. He ordered Ling Kang he to shut up and asked who he thought he was. Immediately afterward, he showed his spiritual power to him, shocking him. Ling Qian, he couldn't believe that such a power existed, for just one look was enough to leave him dumbfounded. The people watching the show were surprised that this stranger actually dared to rebuke a Saint Soul Division elder. They were trying to figure out who that person was, as Ling Hu Kang He didn't dare to utter a word in response. Fang Jian was also among the crowd. He had lost the trust of the second elder since he had failed his plan and his junior had been killed by Tang Yun. Therefore, he was thinking of finding a new person capable of supporting him, and the person who rebuked the elder might be his best choice. Experiencing shock at what he saw, Elder Ling Hu Qian, he stumbled back a step. Mu Jun asked the one what was wrong with the stranger, to which Ling Hu Tsang He replied that he suddenly felt uneasy. He turned around and said that he would guard the perimeter so that they would not miss the stranger. Ling Hu Kang He decided to stay away from the stranger, as he was obviously very strong, and if things didn't go according to plan, he would have a better chance of escaping. Seeing Ling Hu Qian He's reaction, Mu Jun suspected that he simply didn't want to mess with their victim. Tongyun rebuked the elder for choosing to leave so quickly, and after all, he wanted to see his true strength. Mu Jun ordered him to stop talking such nonsense. She didn't care who he was, but she promised that he wouldn't get away alive today. Following her, the elders began to demand the formula from him, threatening that they would not spare him if he decided to resist. Tang Yun said that it was ridiculous, because they must realize that they couldn't stop him if he wanted to leave. After that, he looked at the head of the trading company and thought that it would be foolish to show his strength against the heads of the inner sect. Because if he did so, he would do as the brat from above intended. Mujin asked if he thought they had become elders of the inner sect for nothing. At the same moment, Tang Yun used the divine inner principles move instantly finding himself behind the backs of the heads. Mujin's face turned blue with fear, and she asked what had happened. Tang Yun asked her to repeat what she had just said. Mujun tried to figure out as quickly as possible what had just happened and how the stranger could so quickly walk past them in such a way that they didn't see a single movement. Immediately after which, the Five Souls Elder and the Wind Elder both cried out loudly from that person's speed, for if he attacked them, they would definitely be defeated. Lingu Changhi was convinced that he had done the right thing by getting out of the stranger's way, and so he decided to make his feet from here. Tang Yun asked if they really wanted to stop him. The Beast Soul Elder and the Five Soul Elder immediately apologized for his arrogance and ignorance and said that he could safely leave. The head of the trading company who was secretly observing everything was shocked at how strong that person was. She was only happy that she had prepared two plans. Tang Yun looked at her and said, There are some people in this world who should not be crossed in any way. Immediately afterward, he threw a rock at her, tearing off her mask. From the shock, the head fell over and tried to figure out how that man could have known about her plan. Leaving, Tang Yun said that it was only a warning, and that she would not escape punishment if such a thing happened again. 
Tundai Junde ran up to Madame and asked if she was injured, to which the latter replied that she was perfectly fine and admitted that she had miscalculated. Tundai Junde asked what their next actions would be, because from the looks of it, they might have offended such a powerful personage. The head ordered the deacon to gather all the things on the list, and the sooner the better. They should gather them in a year or even six months if possible. The students who were watching were discussing the identity of the guest, for he was probably from an immortal or a sacred sect. Suddenly Fan Jin came out of the crowd. He wanted to get close to such a powerful man to become his servant. Seeing him, Tong Yun was surprised that Fan Jian was still here, but was still grateful for saving his time. Fan Jian ran up and immediately introduced himself to my lord, whereupon he explained to him that the roads of the inner gate market were quite confusing, and since the master here was probably the first time he offered to show him the way, Tong Yun was interested in Fang Jian's words. After all, the latter is trying to gain his trust thinking that he is a master from the immortal sect. Fan Jin explained that he knew the area well and could get anything if my lord ordered it. Tang Yun accepted Fang Jian's offer and ordered him to gather as many flames as he could, and he would wait for him on the nearest mountain outside the marketplace. Tang Yun was not going to miss his chance since the target himself had fallen into the trap. Fan Jian promised that he would carry out my lord's order to his complete satisfaction and immediately ran. As he ran away, he couldn't hold back a smile, as he had never thought that he would be able to become a servant, so he had no intention of passing up such an opportunity. The rest of the students were shocked, as they hadn't thought to run up and make themselves comfortable. They thought it would be much harder to get along with such a person. For his courage, that guy could definitely get a generous reward, and just a few trinkets from that person would help him climb up the career ladder. After a while, Fan Jin procured a flame and rushed to a certain mountain. He ran up excitedly and shouted out what, bringing the flame. Tang Yun asked how many flames he had brought, to which Fan Jian, holding out a ring, replied that he had bought 89 low-grade, 36 medium-grade, and 12 first-grade flames. Tang Yun was a little surprised at this amount of flames, and assumed that it was quite costly for Fang Jian. Fan Jian clapped himself on his chest and said that it was all nothing and that he was honored to serve him. He promised that he would serve him for the rest of his life if only my lord ordered him to. But inwardly, he could barely contain his anger since he had spent all his money to buy this flame. When Tang Yun heard that Fan Jian wanted to serve him, he couldn't help but laugh out loud. Through his laughter, he faintly said, He is so clever that he has learned to be stupid. Fan Jian asked why my lord suddenly started laughing and whether he had done something wrong. Immediately after which, Tang Yun grew serious, and taking off his veiled hat, he asked if he would recognize him. After which, he appeared in front of Fan Jian without disguise. Fan Jian was shocked since my lord turned out to be Tang Yun. He wanted to know how this was even possible. Tang Yun said that nothing was impossible in this world, and explained that he originally just wanted to buy something at the auction. But then he saw him in the crowd, and realized that it was time to take revenge on Fan Jian for the attempted murder. Fan Jian shouted in horror that he didn't need to be killed. Immediately after which, he began to run away from Tang Yun. He wanted to report everything to the elders of the inner and immortal sex. After all, this was the only way he would have a chance of survival. Tang Yun created a golden spear and said that back then, he had managed to get away. But this time, he used the divine killing life principles to pierce through Fan Jian. After which he thanked the one for buying the lights and advised him to remember to use his eyes and not be so stupid in his next life. The entrance to the Lingshan Garden. Dan Yu circled around the gate worried about Tang Yun, wondering how he had gotten himself into such trouble. Tang Yun suddenly appeared beside him, right after which he asked Dan Yu why he was standing at the gate if he was supposed to watch over the plants. Dan Yu said he was waiting for him, immediately after which he asked if he had killed Guo Lun, the only son of law enforcement elder Guo Zhengming. Tang Yun asked why the man asked him this question so abruptly. Then Dan Yu explained that during Tang Yun's absence, Guo Zhengming had led his subordinates and several thousand searchers to the alchemy division to find him and then kill him. Raising his hand, he whispered that the elder was now in his room. Tang Yun asked if the elder had only come for the sake of a seat, and Dan Yu explained that he was currently negotiating with their division head to kick Tang Yun out, and Deacon Shen told him to wait for him and tell him about it so that Tang Yun would have a chance to hide. Tang Yun asked why he needed to hide and that he needed to meet him in person since he was trying to kick him out right after which he rushed into the garden. Tang Yun had long expected such an outcome and today would be the end of this expedition. Tian Dan shouted for Tang Yun to stop and ran to the deacon to report what had happened, the main square of the alchemy division. The law enforcement disciples were discussing the fact that they couldn't believe that Guo Lun could die so easily at the hands of a mere disciple. 
One of the disciples said that Tang Yun was lucky he wasn't here, because they would have all swatted him right away. Just as suddenly, Tang Yun arrived at the main square. Immediately afterward, he introduced himself and said that he would like to see their head. Only when the disciples saw him did they decide to grab him and take him to the elder. But Tang Yun ordered them out of his way and scattered them, using a bit of his strength. The disciples were angry because of the repulse, hence they weren't going to lose their fighting spirit, and once again went on the attack shouting that they were obligated to deal with him. Tang Yun asked how they were going to do it, and his eyes glowed gold, and in the next instant he scattered all the disciples. Finished with the beating, he grabbed the last student and explained that they were in the alchemy division, not their own territory, and they were clearly in the wrong place to judge him. Elder Guo Zhengming came to the sounds of the fight. When he saw what was happening he called out Tang Yun in a rage, calling him a creature. The apprentice begged for the elder to save him, and reached out to him. Guo Zhengming shouted and ordered Tang Yun to let the disciple go. After which, he began to release his aura shouting that Tang Yun had killed his son and now had the courage to pick a fight with his disciples. And according to the law, he was a criminal from now on. And so he rushed to Tang Yun sentencing him to death. Just as suddenly, Deacon Shen appeared in front of Tang Yun and ordered the elder to stop. After which, he blocked Guo Zhengming's attack to save Tang Yun. After exchanging attacks with the deacon, Guo Zhengming immediately broke the distance and shouted that Tang Yun was going to die for killing his son. And since Shen Qingfeng had stopped the law, he probably decided to try the fist of justice on himself. Shen Qingfeng asked if he thought he could scare him so easily. After all, this was his division. And until Tang Yun was sentenced to execution, Guo Zhengming shouldn't even touch him with a finger. Guo Zhengming jabbed his finger towards Tang Yun and said that even if Tang Yun's crime of killing Guo Lun was not proven, he saw that Tang Yun had beaten up his disciples. Tang Yun explained to the elder that as soon as he appeared, the elder's disciples immediately surrounded him and attacked him. If the elder was really serious about justice, then he was acting in self-defense. On the other hand, the elder's disciples came to the alchemy division and made a mess of the place without any reason so they should be held responsible for everything. Shen Qingfeng confirmed Tang Yun's words since self-defense does indeed fit under the sex laws. Hearing this, Guo Zhengming swore at the two men and was about to threaten them. Just as suddenly, Bing Qing appeared behind his back and immediately ordered him to stop squabbling. After which, Tang Yun and Shen Qingfeng greeted the head. Seeing Tang Yun, Shen Subin got angry since Tang Yun gave her one headache, and Tang Yun mentally praised her for what a good actress she was and that no one would believe him if he talked about how she was recently. Guo Zhengming told the head that it was just in time, as they found out from the investigation. Tang Yun killed his son, so he must take him back to his territory to be executed. Shen Subin ordered Guo Zhengming not to jump to conclusions as she still had questions for Tang Yun. Upon hearing this, Tang Yun agreed to tell everything he knows. Shen Subin asked how Guo Zhengming's son died and if he was involved, to which Tang Yun replied that he and Guo Lun had a conflict. When he tried to enter the inner gate market, Guo Zhengming stopped him and demanded spiritual stones, causing him to get angry. When Guo Zhengming heard about this, he ordered Tang Yun to stop talking such nonsense, because it was no use for his son to stop him and demand spiritual stones. He shut Tang Yun up, because even though it is an unspoken rule, this kind of thing is still a violation of the sex laws, and it will end badly for him if Shen Qingfeng and Shen Subin are involved in all this. Tang Yun chuckled and admitted that he was telling the plain truth, then suggested asking the witnesses who were there. Guo Zhengming ordered him to stop as they would deal with all of this later, and asked how Tang Yun killed his son. Shen Subin ordered him to tell what happened next. She wanted to hear more because if what he said was true, then Tang Yun wouldn't face the death penalty, and it would save them a lot of trouble. Tang Yun said that after Guo Lun started extorting stones from him, he got angry and tried to report it. However, Guo Lun started chasing him with his men to kill him, and all he could do was react in self-defense. Guo Zhengming assumed that it was after that that Tong Yun killed his son. To which Tong Yun replied that it wasn't like that, because Guo Lun had killed Duan Min. Upon hearing this, Guo Zhengming demanded that Tang Yun tell him who he was and how such a thing happened. Tong Yun continued, he revealed that Duan Min was part of a group of criminals in the inner gate market. He had followed him to rob the market and ran into Guo Lun there after which Duan Min killed Guo Lun, who was standing in his way. Shen Subin asked whether what was said was true, after which, Tang Yun pointed a finger at his head and offered to scan his soul if she didn't believe him. Shen Qingfeng assumed that Tang Yun was telling the truth since he was agreeing to go for such a thing, and asked Guo Zhengming what he thought about it. Guo Zhengming asked with his last strength of restrained anger where Duan Min was now, 
to which Tang Yun replied that he had already killed him. After which, he asked not to thank him for it, because if it wasn't for Duan Min, he would have personally killed Guo Lun. Hearing this, Guo Zhengming was unable to contain his anger causing the veins on his face to swell. How suddenly unable to bear so much anger he started vomiting blood. Tang Yun asked the elder why he suddenly started vomiting blood. After all, if anyone found out about it, rumors would spread that the alchemy division was bullying him. After which, Tong Yun took out a pill and said that Elder was lucky, as they had a pill full of medicinal pills. Guo Zhengming thanked Tang Yun for the pill, but still refused after which he said that he should leave since Tang Yun is not his son's killer. Tang Yun smirked and asked the Elder to stay here for a while. He explained that their division was at least part of the nine great divisions. And so he was forced to ask if the Elder didn't think he could just come and go at will. Guo Zhengming asked what he meant by that, to which Tang Yun replied that their slabs were made of high-quality frost iron, and a lot of effort and money had been spent on each piece. He then asked the elder to look at how he had mutilated them, for which he should compensate by paying several thousand spirit stones. Guo Zhengming once again lit up due to anger, and asked Tang Yun how dare he speak of such a thing. But Shen Qingfeng said that Tang Yun was right, and Shen Subing said that he had been here for several days looking for the killer and he had taken many disciples with him. Since they found out that Tang Yun was innocent, Guo Zhengming should pay compensation. At this moment, Guo Zhengming realized that he couldn't just leave this place without paying anything. And so, with a longing in his heart, he took out the ring and explained that inside were 5,000 spirit stones. Taking the ring, Tang Yun thanked the elder and said that they would be happy to see him again. And he also offered to prepare more expensive materials for him to break it. Unable to contain his anger at his disciples' insolence, Guo Zhengming once again began to vomit blood. After which, he hid his trembling hand and threatened that Tang Yun would pay for everything soon. Immediately after that, he hurriedly left so as not to tolerate Tang Yun's antics. Shen Qingfeng laughed and admitted that it was nice to see Guo Zhengming vomiting blood twice because of Tang Yun's words. After which, Shen Subin recognized that they had all underestimated him very much. And after all, he was just a simple disciple. Tang Yun said that she flattered him and handed her the ring they had been given as compensation. Shen Subin refused the ring and asked Tang Yun to keep it, as they only got it because of his efforts. She asked him to consider it as a reward for his efforts. Just as suddenly, Shen Subin was startled by a ghastly voice that asked if she had prepared everything. Immediately afterward, she turned around and saw the third elder. Shen Subin told Tang Yun that he could be free and asked Shen Qingfeng to wait outside the main hall. Tang Yun easily guessed that this person had come for the soul restoration pill, and thought that everything should be fine since he had given an alternative formula. Now, he was going to go to the space-time tower to strengthen his flame of divine principles with the ghostly flame of the Violet Sea. Shen Subin and the Elder walked into the main hall of the Alchemy Division, immediately after which she greeted him. But the Elder grinned lustfully and reminded her that she might not be so polite to him. Reaching out his hand to Shen Subin's chest, he said that they hadn't seen each other for a month, and that's why he wanted to see her. But Shen Subin slapped his arm and asked him to keep his temper. Whereupon the third elder sullenly said that she was ungrateful, and asked if she had prepared what he had asked for. Shen Subin bowed and said that she was unable to find the materials she needed, but she had some materials to replace them with. Hearing this, the elder's eyes turned bloodshot, and he pointed his finger at Bing Ching, shouting that the formula for the soul restoration pill had been passed down from generation to generation and that there were no alternatives to the necessary materials. He said that it would be bad if she didn't prepare, but now she was brazenly spreading lies, which made him think that she was tired of being the head of the inner sect, and he suggested that she be removed from that position. He believed that in order to get a man, he must first be intimidated. Shen Subing angrily replied that the third elder had no right to throw her off her post since she was personally appointed by the head of the Tang Immortal Sect. She wasn't going to tremble in fear since her mentor had given her the formula. The elder asked if she understood who she was dialoguing with, and if she knew what would happen if the pill wasn't ready. Shen Subin made a promise that everything would be at its best, and that she would create the best pill. Seeing how confident Bing Qing was, the third elder realized that he couldn't break her, and so he reminded her that they were waiting for the pill in five months. Either they get the pill, or their heads will be cut off. Hearing about five months, Shen Subing thought that this time was quite enough. As soon as the third elder left, a deacon came up to Bing Qing and asked if the third elder had learned about the resurrecting jade grass. Shen Subing recognized that he found out about everything, but she has a plan. She told Ching Chu that she needs him to do two things. She then handed him the list, and ordered him to gather ten servings each of the herbs listed in the formula. 
after which she would personally prepare the pill. Shen Qingfeng asked how she was going to do it, since they didn't have the right elements. Bing Qing told her to just do as she asked, and also asked her to tell Lu Wu that she would personally take the demise of the jade grass, and henceforth he was free to go. Shen Qingfeng bowed to Bing Qing and left to carry out her instructions. Shen Subbing thought about the fact that even with the mentor formula, the level needed for the soul recovery pill was a bit higher than what she could confidently create, and so she hoped that she would succeed. She hoped that the teacher would be by her side. After a while, Lu Wu returned to his cave dwelling, after which Zhang Xiao rushed over to greet the returning head. Suddenly Lu Wu started yelling about what a bitch Bing King was, and that she should definitely pay for what she did to him. Zhang Xia realized that the elder was not in the mood, but he just had to tell the one about what happened to Duan Zheng. Lu Wu asked Zhang Xia if he had heard anything about Tang Yun's death, to which the latter replied that Tang Yun was not dead, and that he had been seen in the martial arts arena today, where he had entered the space-time tower. Lu Wu asked what Duan Zheng was doing, since it had been so long but he hadn't killed Tang Yun yet, whereupon Lu Wu ordered him to bring him to him. Zheng Xia tried to think of a way to explain everything. Ah Lu Wu realized that something was wrong and asked what happened to Duan Zheng. Immediately afterward, Zhang Xia fell to his knees and said that not long ago, Duan Zheng's soul had been extinguished. Lu Wu was shocked by what he heard. He said that Duan Zheng was at the first level of the soul refinement realm, and that he had sent him to kill Tang Yun being at the seventh level of the soul cultivation realm. He wanted to understand how the latter had lost. Zhang Xia explained that Tang Yun had probably never been Duan Zheng's equal. The problem was that he was secretly being helped by the Shen twins. After pondering for a bit, Lu Wu recognized that they wouldn't be able to get rid of him secretly. After which, Zhang Xia reported that senior apprentice Wu Yang Qian and second apprentice Gao Yang Wushuang were about to come out of the space-time tower. He explained that the two of them wouldn't even notice Tang Yun, and all they had to do was... Ten days later, outside the space-time tower 520, Tang Yun reflected on the fact that he had finally absorbed the ghostly flame of the Purple Sea after so long. His divine flame of sacred principles could now destroy even the best spiritual weapons. The only bad thing was that his time was up, and he would have to wait for some more time before absorbing the flame that Fan Jian had given him. After which, he looked at the advanced tower and thought that time passed much slower in it than in an ordinary tower, and therefore, it should be a great place for his cultivation, and from the looks of it, it should open soon. The students gathered en masse around the advanced space-time tower discussing the fact that it has 10 floors. And on the topmost floor, the day goes on like 18. But it wasn't as easy as it might seem, because in order to reach the ninth level, they would have to endure unimaginable gravity, something no one had been able to do in the past 30,000 years. Once the tower opened, a multitude of powerful cultivators would try to reach the top. After hearing the gossip, Tang Yun thought it was an unusual method for getting into the tower. Suddenly the door of the tower opened and Gaoyang Wu Shuang and Ouyang Qian came out. They are Elder Lu Wu's disciples, and they were the ones who had risen the highest the previous time. The disciples began to discuss the rumors that Tang Yun's ordinary disciple had killed Lu Wu's junior disciple, leaving the two of them as the elder's only support. And then they began to bet on whether or not Tang Yun would fight them. Elder Lu Wu contacted Ouyang Qian and told her that not too long ago, a mere Tang Yun disciple had killed their junior Ye Ling, hence he asked them to take revenge. Gao Yang Wushuang advised Tang Yun to stay out of his sight, as he would be the last person Tang Yun would see. Wu Yang Qian told her fellow student that according to Master Tang Yun should be somewhere nearby. Upon hearing this, Gao Yang Wushuang ordered Tang Yun to come out to him right away. Tang Yun stepped out of the crowd unhindered and asked what he wanted. Gao Yang Wushuang asked if the one was really Tang Yun. Yi Tang Yun confirmed it after which he asked the one to say what he wanted, and not to detain him. Immediately after, he rushed over to Tang Yun and asked him to memorize the name Gao Yang Wushuang, for it was he, Elder Lu Wu's second disciple, who would be the messenger of his death. Tang Yun concentrated the power of gold in his hand and said that everyone was telling him that they would kill him. Immediately afterward, he tried to repel Gao Yang Wushuang's attack, which caused a massive burst of flame. Wu Yang Qian ran up to her fellow student and asked if he was all right to which the latter replied that he was unharmed, but he had clearly underestimated his opponent. Tang Yun said that Lu Wu's disciples were trying to kill him again, and asked if they were following him because wherever he went they always followed his footsteps. Gaoyang Wushuang advised Tang Yun to hold his tongue behind his zoo, just as suddenly, Elder Shen Wanda landed between them and ordered them to stop fighting, for the advanced space-time tower would soon open. 
Wu Yangxian ran up to the elder and told him that Tang Yun had killed their junior fellow student, Ye Ling, because of which they wanted to take revenge by challenging them to a deadly duel, which was well within the law. At such words, the surrounding disciples dropped their jaws, because Lu Wu's disciples are once again trying to kill Tang Yun, and they probably won't rest until they kill him. Lu Wu's two senior disciples are among the 30 strongest in the alchemy division, so Tong Yun should refuse to duel if he has a shred of common sense. Shen Wanda pondered on how he could stop the fight. After all, Lu Wu's disciples are at the peak of soul cultivation while Tang Yun is only at the seventh level, making the difference between them simply enormous. After which, he turned to Gaoyang Wushuang and said that it was all nonsense, because the opening of the advanced tower would be any minute now, and so he advised them to leave in peace. Gaoyang Wushuang tried to object, but Wu Yangqian advised him to stop. After all, Tang Yun is a friend of Shen Qingfeng and Shen Wanda, and Tang Yun better not touch when either of them are around. Gaoyang Wushuang had to retreat, but he advised Tang Yun to pray that there would be no next time, as luck would definitely turn away from him later. Suddenly to everyone, Tang Yun asked them where they were going. Afterward he said he would deal with them. He thought it would be better if he got rid of them before they gave him any more trouble. Shen Wanda was shocked that Tang Yun dared to fight them after he saved him, and Gaoyang Wushuang started laughing madly since the latter had asked for his own death. After assuming combat readiness, he beckoned Tang Yun with a hand motion and ordered him to attack. But Tang Yun asked if he was deaf by any chance. I mean, he said he'd deal with both of them at once. The surrounding disciples were shocked, as Tang Yun didn't seem to realize what he was saying, because by fighting together, Lu Wu's senior disciples were able to enter the top 20 strongest in the division. Wu Yang Qian said that he clearly underestimated them since he decided to fight the two at the same time. Gao Yang Wushuang told Tang Yun that he was dust to him even in a one on one battle, but Tang Yun refuted it and said that in his eyes, the two of them are weaklings. After which, he let his finger down and said that all of Lu Wu's disciples were disgusting to him. Seeing how insolent Tang Yun was, the other disciples began to speak up in support of Gao Yang Wushuang and Ou Yang Qian. Since they clearly shouldn't have called them that, they wished for the senior disciples to crush Tang Yun. Gaoyang Wushuang with Wu Yang Qian started laughing loudly since no one had ever underestimated them so much before. Hence they wished to help Tang Yun die, and so they agreed to fight him two on one. Suddenly, Shen Wand blocked their path again and told them to take their time, because two on one death duels hadn't been held yet, and they needed to discuss everything. He felt that this was the only way he could help Tang Yun survive. Tang Yun thanked the sixth elder for his kindness and concern, but asked him to let him deal with it now, as Lu Wu's disciples would continue to pursue him. Besides, he had full confidence that he would be able to win this battle. Wu Yang Qian reminded the elder that the sex laws did not say how many people should fight in a deathmatch, and the only requirement was that both parties agreed, indicating that they were acting within the law. Shen Wanda tried to think of a way to dissuade them from fighting, as those two are too strong. But in the end, he had to agree to their duel. However, this is a serious situation, and if not handled properly, disputes may arise between Elder Lu Wu and Ling Shen Grass Garden. Therefore, he has to inform the sect head and the two parties before they start fighting. Tang Yun and Lu Wu's disciples agreed to wait for a while. An hour later, Bing Qing arrived at the arena with Elder Lu Wu and Shen Qing Feng. Bing Qing was angry that she hadn't seen him a few days ago, but he was making trouble for her again. She asked him to think about what would happen to Shen Qingfeng if he died. At the moment, she wished to be busy refining the soul restoration pill, but she has to deal with her disciples. Shen Qingfeng asked Tang Yun if he understood what he was agreeing to. After all, those two were much stronger than Ye Lin. Tang Yun said he thought it over a few times before agreeing and asked him to just believe in him. Bin King recognized that there was no way he could interfere with a fully negotiated and agreed upon mortal combat and therefore asked him to do as he saw fit since he was so sure of it. Shen Qingfeng asked Tang Yun to be as careful as possible in battle. Lu Wu talked over the situation with his students and wished them good luck. The senior disciples asked him not to worry him about it after all. Tang Yun would definitely die today. As both sides were ready, Shen Wan announced the start of a battle not for life, but to the death. Gaoyang Wushuang shouted out that he was careless last time, but now he would finish off Tang Yun with a single blow. Tang Yun said that he could talk as long as he could, but now they would be able to find out everything in real life. Gao Yang Wushuang ordered Tang Yun to shut up and rushed towards that one creating a multitude of fire fists. The spectators immediately began to discuss this technique. Gao Yang Wushuang had once killed a rank 9 soul cultivator with it, 
so they were curious if Tang Yun could withstand it. Tang Yun did not dodge and took all the blows on himself. The spectators thought that he was dazed with fear, and they did not think that he was so weak that he could die so easily. Shen Wand and Shen Qingfeng were trying to figure out what had happened, and why Tang Yun didn't try to dodge. Bing Qing thought about the fact that Tang Yun was as calm as a snake before receiving the blow, causing her to assume that he was not afraid of such attacks. After undermining Tang Yun, Gaoyang Wushuang began laughing loudly and mocking what trash Tang Yun turned out to be. After which, he turned to Elder Lu Wu and reported that he was done with their problem, and that he would no longer have to... Suddenly Tang Yun jumped out of the smokescreen and rushed towards Wu Shuang while asking who he was burying. Managing to react, Wu Yangqian shouted at Wu Shuan Udaba as he dodged, but it was already too late, and Tang Yun had achieved his goal. Everyone was shocked, as there wasn't even a scratch visible on Tang Yun, and on top of that, he had managed to damage Gaoyang Wu Shuang while coming out unharmed, causing his physical strength to stagger the imagination of those around him. The elders were trying to understand why Tang Yun was so strong, they even thought that he had learned a strengthening technique unknown to them. Seeing what was happening, those around him could only be sure that Tang Yun was not as simple as he seemed. Ouyang Qian ran up to Gaoyang Wushuang and asked if he was alright, to which he replied that he was fine, except that he hadn't followed Tang Yun. The wound he had inflicted was so serious that Gaoyang would only be able to use one attack. Ouyang Qian realized that they had no choice, and she proposed to use that very technique to stomp Tang Yun. Suddenly, Elder Lu Wu standing behind them asked them to be as careful as possible. He ordered them to attack at the same time and destroy Tang Yun. Gao Yang Wu Shuang said that they had everything under control and that Tang Yun would not survive the next attack. Seeing Wu Yang Qian and Gao Yang Wu Shuang discussing something, Tang Yun realized that they had finally decided to launch their strongest attack. Hence, he decided to get a little more serious. Gao Yang Wu Shuang and Wu Yang Qian admitted that they greatly underestimated Tang Yun and he managed to force them to attack at the same time. But this is surely the end of his capabilities. Immediately afterward, Wu Yang Qian used the Burning Heaven, and Gao Yang Wu Shuang used the Extermination Torture at the same time as her, after which they made contact with their hands and created a huge tornado of wind and fire. The disciples were shocked that these two had combined wind and fire, and since they were hiding such a strong trump card, Tang Yun was surely a corpse. Shen Qingfeng panicked and shouted for Tang Yun to run away, while Shen Wanda told him that even people from the Soul Perfection realm would think twice before taking on such an attack. The moment everyone panicked, Lu Wu smirked as his revenge finally caught up with Tang Yun. And only Shen Subing was curious if Tang Yun would be able to survive this blow being at the seventh level of Soul Cultivation. Lu Wu's senior disciples shouted that they had created this technique specifically for the Nine Division Tournament, and therefore ordered Tang Yun to be proud of what he would die from, as he was extremely lucky. Immediately after which, they directed the Burning Sky Ferocious Tornado technique at Tang Yun. Tang Yun recognized that their technique was so flawed that he refused to even acknowledge it, and summoned the Swords of Divine Retribution. After that, he used the Dragon-like Blades, Earthshaker technique. From the collision of such strong techniques, a violent explosion occurred, shocking all the spectators. Shen Qingfeng said that he hoped that Tang Yun was still alive, and Shen Wanda said that with his physical strength, Tang Yun was still able to stand on his feet. Shen Subin wondered if the seventh level could really defeat two people at the peak of soul cultivation. Elder Lu Wu, on the other hand, thought that his disciples' technique was too strong, and that there was no way Tang Yun would be able to survive it. Once the explosion dissipated, one could see Gaoyang Wushang, Ouyang Qian, and Tang Yun remaining in their seats. The spectators were surprised that everything remained as if nothing had happened, as if none of the fighters had moved. Some even speculated that the forces were so equal that the battle might be a stalemate. Elder Lu Wu refused to believe what he had seen, as there was no way a mere disciple could be equal to his strongest disciples. And Shen Wanda and Shen Qingfeng were cheering for Tang Yun. And even Shen Subing smiled at the fact that the Tang Yun she had bet on was able to stay intact. Gaoyang Wushuang asked Tang Yun where he was able to learn such a sword technique, to which Tang Yun replied that he was its creator. Ouyang Qian admitted that she hadn't even considered that he was so talented and so if he lost, she wouldn't be too upset. Immediately after which, Wu Yang Qian and Gao Yang Wu Shuang's legs went under, and they collapsed onto the ground. The disciples were frightened by the outcome of the fight. Since the older disciples had lost to Tang Yun, they thought that they would fight at most on par. Besides, some disciples had the same level as Tang Yun, but Tang Yun wouldn't even feel anything if they tried to attack him. Shen Wanda asked the deacon if he had noticed that Tang Yun had killed the opponents. 
to which Shen Qingfeng replied that he had long suspected that Tang Yun had been hiding his true strength, but he hadn't even thought that he would be so powerful. Shen Subin admitted that she had greatly underestimated Tang Yun, and she was already anticipating the shock on the faces of the elders when Tang Yun would go to the Nine Division Tournament. Elder Lu Wu released his aura and threatened Tang Yun for killing his strongest disciples, to which Tang Yun replied that they had started it all by themselves. Shen Qingfeng explained to Elder Lu Wu that this was a battle to the death. And in such fights, death is the usual result. Lu Wu wasn't going to leave it like that and began to form a technique to kill Tang Yun. Suddenly, Shen Subing appeared in front of him with clearly not good intentions and asked if he dared to break the sex laws. Realizing the situation he was in, Elder Lu Wu swallowed his tongue. Then he bowed to the Elder and swore that he would never violate them himself. As he left, the Elder took his disciples with him and promised Tang Yun that death would soon befall him. Watching Elder Lu fly away, the disciples began to discuss how deep Lu Wu's resentment was. After all, Tang Yun had killed every single one of his personal disciples, and no one had even thought of such a thing. Elder Lu's disciples are arrogant and irritable. They always bullied other disciples, causing many of them to be happy about the outcome. Shen Subin said that it was time for her to leave since the battle was over, and she left the rest to Shen Wanda and Shen Qingfeng. Immediately afterward, Elder Shen Wanda asked for attention, and announced that the tower climb would soon begin, and ordered everyone who planned to climb up to prepare. The students were excited and started arguing about who would reach which floor. Right now, there weren't two strong students among them, and so they hoped that they could take the very first place. Just as suddenly, Pang He, Pang An, and Pang Shiwan arrived at the arena, whereupon the latter asked if they were late. Seeing Pang An, the disciples were annoyed as he was the third strongest in the division, and since he was here, he would go first. Some even discussed whether Tang Yun would be able to compete with him. Upon hearing about Tang Yun, Pang He immediately pointed at Tang Yun and asked Pang An to take revenge on him. But Pang An refused, as climbing the tower today was his first priority, and he would deal with a mere disciple when he came out of the tower. Noticing Pang He, Tang Yun realized that he had not calmed down after their previous meeting, which meant that nothing would go quietly for him as always. Shen Wand began to talk about the rules of climbing. The advanced space-time tower has nine floors, and with each floor, the gravity increases by 50%. The first one to climb to the ninth floor would be rewarded with the true purple phoenix flame left behind by an ancestor of the sect. Furthermore, fighting is forbidden during the ascent. Tang Yun was slightly surprised when he heard about the flames. After all, he didn't expect to get something so worthwhile here. With the power of the flames, his personal strength would increase by several times. Shen Qingfeng approached Tang Yun and asked which floor he thought he could get to, to which Tang Yun replied with a smile that he would get to the ninth floor. Hearing this, Pang An realized how naive Tang Yun was, daring to say such a thing as a mere disciple, indicating that Tang Yun was unable to assess his own strength. Pang He wondered why Tang Yun was so confident. After all, no one had yet been able to reach the ninth floor during their division's existence. Realizing that a fight was coming, Shen Qingfeng ordered Peng Shiyuan to rein in his men. Peng Shiyuan said that he agreed with his disciples' opinion. After all, being a mere disciple one dares to brag about climbing to the ninth floor and mock them all. Shen Qingfeng advised Peng Shiyuan not to be too confident as he might get into an embarrassing situation from which Pang Shiyuan laughed and offered to place bets since he was so confident. If Pang An won, Shen Qingfeng would give up the personal medical field. Tang Yun interrupted Shi Yuan, asking what he himself would bet. The latter laughed again and replied that they could take anything they wanted. He thought that his bet didn't matter since Pang An would win anyway. Tang Yun agreed with his bet and advised Deacon Sheng to accept the bet if he believed in it. Shen Qingfeng clenched his fist and shouted that he agreed. Tang Yun had never let him down before and so he was confident in the urge to trust him once again. Hearing about the bet, the disciples were shocked as the deacon trusted Tang Yun too much. In addition, the previous time Pang An was able to climb the seventh floor, and this time he is going to climb the eighth floor, while Tang Yun is several times weaker than him. Almost all the students agreed that Deacon Shen would lose the bet, and even Pang Xiuan thanked the deacon in advance for such a valuable gift. But Tang Yun advised him not to rejoice prematurely and said that he hoped to see Peng Shiwan's trembling smile when he saw that he had climbed to the ninth floor. Seeing that Tang Yun's confidence was not lacking, Peng He assumed that he had prepared some kind of trick, which was immediately refuted by Peng An as most likely Tang Yun was just too arrogant, and that he would be able to win without even thinking about it. Peng Shiwan advised him to reassure himself even if he couldn't do anything, 
He ordered Pang He to find a way to somehow confuse Tang Yun when they were in the tower. Once the time came, Shen Wan lifted the token up and opened the door to the tower, at the same time triggering the gravity grid that interferes with the student's climb. Not a moment later, a multitude of students rushed up the stairs to climb as high as they could. Only Tang Yun walked leisurely as he had expended too much energy in the recent battle and was going to gradually recover it. The disciples wondered why Tang Yun was going up so slowly. After all, not long ago, he had said that he would go up to the ninth floor. And since even they could go up faster, the deacon had lost. Pang Shiwan thought that victory was already in his pocket, since Pang An was already on the sixth floor, while Tang Yun still hadn't ascended to the second floor. Shen Qing Feng wondered what was going on with Tang Yun as he was behaving unusually. After accumulating enough energy, Tang Yun decided to speed up the climb. Suddenly, Pang He and the other disciples got in his way. Pang He mocked Tang Yun, who had only just reached the third floor, but he had tried to mock them not long ago. The disciples said that Brother An didn't even consider Tang Yun as his rival, and that his journey would end here. Tang Yun grinned and said that now he understood everything. They were trying to put sticks in his wheels. Everyone smirked evilly, and Pang He said that they were just tired since they had climbed so high, and Tang Yun would have to wait for them to rest since fighting was forbidden in the tower. The disciples from below began to get angry at Pang He because he used two sneaky techniques, causing Tang Yun to be unable to pass on. Shen Qing Feng demanded an answer from Pang Shiwan whether he was involved in what was happening on the tower, and Shen Wanda asked Elder Shiwan if it was too inappropriate for his status to which the latter replied that no rules had been broken. Shen Qingfeng said that Peng Shiwan's acts are ridiculous if he thinks that such antics can stop Tang Yun. Tang Yun advised Peng He and his disciples to get out of his way. Peng He asked what the latter would do, after all. It was forbidden to fight here, and they wouldn't budge no matter what the situation was, because of which Tang Yun would just have to wait. Tang Yun ordered those vile worms out of his way, and unleashed his aura throwing them off the tower. Falling from the tower, Pang He and his disciples began to panic as their affairs were not good. Immediately afterward, they all met the ground. After surviving the fall, Pang He asked his uncle to help him since he could no longer feel his legs. Pang Shiwan reprimanded Tang Yun and shouted that the latter attacked the disciples and broke the rules. Shen Qingfeng stroked his beard and said that he had not seen Tang Yun touch them with even a finger from which it followed that he had broken the rules, and the disciples had fallen from the tower by themselves. Shen Wanda agreed with Shen Qingfeng as even he saw that Tang Yun did not raise his hand at the disciples, but merely took a step. Pang Shiyuan was forced to accept the elder's point of view and called for someone to rescue Pang He. The disciples started laughing at how stupid Pang He and his men were. And besides, the elder got what he deserved since he had decided to play unfairly. Pang Shiyuan said that he who laughs last laughs well, then told Shen Qingfeng that Pang An had already reached the seventh floor while Tang Yun was only on the third floor. Shen Qingfeng replied that it was too early to talk about the winner and suggested waiting until the end. Inwardly, he prayed that Tang Yun would win. Meanwhile, on the approach to the fifth floor, the disciples lost all their strength as they could not bear the heavy gravity and stopped to meditate on their progress. Seventh floor. Pang An pondered that although Tang Yun is too weak for him, but he still shouldn't stop there and must reach the eighth floor. Tang Yun wasn't going to linger on the third floor any longer and use the divine body of life principles, immediately after which he began to swiftly climb up the tower. He walked past the students with such speed that they couldn't even realize what had just happened. But some disciples still realized that it was Tang Yun. They were surprised as they themselves were expending all their energy to take a single step while Tang Yun just flew past. Meanwhile, Pang An was gaining strength to take the last step and finally reach the eighth floor. Suddenly he heard something strange. And turning around, he saw Tang Yun running towards him. Not wanting to lose the lead, Pang An used the charge and flew down the last few steps to the eighth floor. The spectators began to discuss what had happened. After all, for thousands of years, no one had been able to climb there. Hence, Pang An would leave his name in history as a genius of the alchemy division. Pang An asked Chen Qingfeng, why doesn't the latter just give up the medical field, as there is no point for them to continue arguing. After all, even if Tang Yun could reach the eighth floor, it would still be Pang An's victory to go up first. Shen Qingfeng was not going to give up so easily, and reiterated that it was too early to draw conclusions. Pang Shiwan agreed that Shen Qingfeng still had a chance, but that was only if Tang Yun could reach the ninth floor. But no one during the existence of their division had ever been able to climb to the top, and Tang Yun was among them. Shen Wan admitted that he had nothing against Tang Yun, but the latter really had a paltry chance. Shen Qingfeng did not comment on this in any way, 
and wondered if Tang Yun would be able to create a miracle. Meanwhile in the tower, Tang Yun stopped in front of the panting Pang An. Pang An admitted that he had underestimated Tang Yun since he had managed to get here, but unfortunately he would still lose. Tang Yun asked why he would be the one to lose, to which Pang An replied that it should be obvious after all. He came here early and the victory is his, which means Shen Qing Feng can say goodbye to his medical field. Tang Yun waved his finger and said that he was rejoicing early after all, they were betting on who would get higher, and if he climbed to the ninth floor, he would win. Hearing this, Pang An laughed, after which he asked Tang Yun what he was talking about, because in the history of the alchemy division, there was still no person who had conquered the ninth floor. Pang An said that he thinks it's as if the ancestors only wanted to make the ninth floor as an incentive for disciples, and the eighth floor is the true limit. No one is capable of getting to the ninth floor. But to his surprise, Tang Yun walked past him and asked him not to justify his weakness to others. After all, Panan's limit, it was hard for Tang Yun to even call it a warm-up. Pang An was surprised that Tang Yun still dared to go higher, even knowing that no one had gotten to the ninth floor. Since Tang Yun is just a simple disciple, there's no way he could believe that such a person could do this. The only conclusion is that Tang Yun is not who he says he is. The disciples watching the climbing were shocked to see Tang Yun climb to the eighth floor, but even so, he came in late from Pang An due to starting too slowly. Shen Wanda tried to comfort Shen Qingfeng by saying that although he had lost the medical field, he was able to learn about Tang Yun's potential, which was more important. To which Shen Qingfeng replied that it was too early to draw conclusions, and that he truly believed that Tang Yun would be able to climb to the top of the tower. Pang Xiuan said that the fact that a mere disciple climbed to the eighth floor is already a miracle. But even so, Shen Qingfeng dares to believe that Tang Yun will climb to the ninth floor. As the onlookers suddenly shrieked in shock, Tang Yun began to rise higher. Because of which the elders who were amazed by this stopped talking and tried to understand how this was possible. The disciples wanted to see if Tang Yun was in his right mind since he really wanted to rise to the top. But if he really didn't want to lose then he would have to do it. They still had a student in their minds who had once tried to climb higher than his limit allowed, from which he was only crippled. Pang Xiuan said that Tang Yun didn't know his limit as a mere disciple, but still recognized that he could be called a genius. Tang Yun pondered on Xin Wan's words. He said that gravity would increase by 50%, but on the top floor, it feels like the gap here is much bigger. But this was even good, because this way Tang Yun would be able to improve the golden body of life principles. At this moment, some of the students began to cheer for Tang Yun, because even though it was slow, Tang Yun was still managing to rise up. Shen Qingfeng continued to watch Tang Yun with awe in his eyes, believing that he would be able to climb. Pang An flared up with rage. He wasn't going to lose to a mere disciple so easily. Pang Xiuan asked Pang An why he was standing still and ordered him to go higher. Hearing this, Shen Qingfeng was surprised and asked if he really wanted to do that. And Shen Wanda tried to advise him to stop his disciple, as climbing up could only hurt Pang An. But Pang Xiuan ordered them to shut up after all. If Tang Yun could do it, then Pang An would not give in to him. Realizing that he wouldn't be able to change his mind, Shen Wanda could only sigh. Pang An heard his uncle's words and asked himself how he was worse than, after which he decided to go higher after all he can't lose to someone like Tang Yun. As the gravity suddenly failed, Pang An was flattened to the floor. He couldn't understand how Tang Yun could stand on a step with such strong gravity. Tang Yun turned around to Pang An and said that they were different. Pang An only reached the eighth floor because that was his limit while he himself would only climb to the ninth floor because that was the maximum. Hearing this, Pang An cried out that there was no way he could be worse off from Tang Yun and tried to get up, but in the next instant he was flattened to the ground again, causing him to spit out a mouthful of blood. Seeing this, Tang Yun said that the worst thing a person can do is to not know his limit. Seeing this, the disciples were shocked that Pang An was unable to resist gravity. Moreover, he was unable to even take a step back, while Tang Yun had already passed halfway, continuing to increase the difference between them. Shen Wand recognized that the last step didn't just increase gravity 450 times. Gravity increases by a thousand times, and that was the reason why no one had ever managed to climb to the top, which was common knowledge. The students were shocked at what they heard and asked if it was even possible, and if the ancestors wanted anyone to go up. Upon hearing this, Shen Qingfeng cried out in shock, for no one in the soul cultivation realm could withstand such gravity. He asked how Tang Yun could even climb up there. Hearing this, Pang Xiuan ordered Pang An to go down, as there was no way Tang Yun would be able to climb to the ninth floor, which meant that victory was theirs. 
Pang An gathered his strength and pushed off, rolling backwards a step. Then he asked Tang Yun what good would it do for him to climb higher, because there was no way Tang Yun could climb to the ninth floor. Meanwhile, Tang Yun leisurely walked up the stairs pondering that a little more exposure to the strong gravity, and he would be able to refine the golden body of life principles. The disciples were still in shock that Tang Yun was only a step away from the ninth floor. They understood that his strength was beyond comprehension. But still, the last step was the most difficult, and there was no way Tang Yun would be able to make it. Pang Xiuan shouted to Tang Yun to just admit defeat. After all, the ninth floor is an unfathomable target. Tang Yun looked at the elder who had already bored him and decided to teach him a lesson. For the sake of it, he took one step back. Pang Xiuan started to mock Tang Yun and said that he was just lucky. And the fact that he was talking about the ninth floor shows how smug Tang Yun is. The disciples believed that Tang Yun had lost only because of his mistake. But even so, they would continue to admire him since he had managed to get this far. Shen Qingfeng had lost all hope. After all, Tang Yun was so close to victory. And Shen Wan to tried to comfort him by saying that Tang Yun had done his best. But even so, the ninth floor remained out of reach. Pang Xiuan advised Shen Qingfeng to face the truth as there was no way Tang Yun would ever be able to do that in his life. Tang Yun smirked, and asked why he thought as if he was incapable of reaching the ninth floor, after which he used the golden body of life principles. The shocked disciples tried to understand where this golden light came from, after which they realized that it was being emitted by the enhanced Tang Yun. Immediately after which, Tang Yun stepped onto the impossible ninth floor. The disciples were shocked, as Tang Yun managed to break the record. They even thought that they had just imagined it. And even Pang Shiwan refused to believe his eyes. A second ago, Tang Yun took a step back since he didn't have enough strength, but afterward he managed to get up. He was sure that Tang Yun was cheating and announced that he would check it out. Hearing this, Shen Qingfeng laughed and said that someone couldn't accept defeat and asked who it was, hinting at the elder standing next to him with this. Pang Shiwan jabbed his finger towards Shen Qingfeng and was about to say it all. Suddenly, he was summoned by Tang Yun at the top of the tower. Tang Yun said that he only took a step back because his leg was stiff and asked if he had caused any misunderstanding by doing so. Hearing this, Pang Xiuan got angry and asked Tang Yun if he was trying to bully the elder. Tang Yun said that the elder couldn't say that now, since he was the one who had assumed that Tang Yun could no longer continue climbing, even though Tang Yun hadn't even said such a thing. Therefore, he was very sorry since the elder was wrong in his assumptions. Pang Xiuan tried to object to Tang Yun as he suddenly trembled and in a second, he started vomiting blood. The disciples started laughing at the elder as because of Tang Yun's awesomeness. Pang Shiwan started vomiting blood, and this was despite the fact that no one had any idea that climbing up to the ninth floor was a possibility. Everyone thought that today was the most frustrating day for Elder Pan, and that he would definitely hold a grudge against Tang Yun. Shen Qingfeng asked Pang Shiwan if he was sick once he started vomiting blood. Shen Wanda advised Pang Shiwan not to get too angry, otherwise they would have to look for a replacement for his position. Pang Xiuan wiped away the blood and said that it was all nothing and that they shouldn't worry about him. Hearing that the one was fine, Shen Qingfeng started rubbing his beard and asked if the one had forgotten about the argument. After all, Tang Yun was already on the ninth floor, and that it would be shameful to take back his words in front of so many people. To which Pang Xiuan replied that he was an elder of the inner sect and that he always kept his word. He tried to think of something since he might go bankrupt because of Shen Qingfeng's desire. Shen Qingfeng gathered his thoughts and asked Pang Shiwan. Just as suddenly, Pang Shiwan interrupted him and offered to conclude another argument. Shen Qingfeng asked what else the man wanted to lose. Pang Shiwan suggested to see who was stronger than Tang Yun or Pang An. When the disciples heard this, they were surprised to hear such an argument since Pang An is the third strongest in their division. They thought that although Tang Yun had won the competition, there was no way he could defeat Pang An in a one-on-one -on -one fight. So they were disappointed in Elder Pang as he had decided to go for the mean. Shen Qingfeng asked Pang Shiwan if he thought he was stupid, because there was no way he would agree to a losing fight. Pang Shiwan asked the one to take his time in refusing, and added the Golden Dragon Sacred Flame to the dispute if Tang Yun won. Pang An thought that since Shen Qingfeng had won, he would definitely demand something for Tang Yun, and using this flame the latter would just have to bite. Seeing such a precious flame, Shen Qingfeng was speechless. Tang Yun had already obtained the purple phoenix flame, and if he fused the two flames into the dragon phoenix flame, absorbing them would greatly increase his strength. After waiting a little while for Shen Qingfeng to think things over, Pang Shiwan asked what the latter thought of the dispute, 
To which Shen Qingfeng replied that it would be up to Tang Yun to decide, as he couldn't decide for others. He thought that Tang Yun had incredible physical strength to climb so high, but in a battle, things might go differently. If this flame could help Tang Yun, it was up to him. Realizing that Shen Qingfeng couldn't be persuaded, Pang Shiyuan agreed to wait for Tang Yun to come out and make a decision himself. Three months later, inside the space-time tower, Tang Yun chanted, from the four corners of the universe, passing the barriers of time. After which he shouted out, time-condensing power, and created a talisman. But looking at it, he was disappointed that he didn't have enough leftovers to create a full-fledged time-stopping talisman. Because of the materials, the talisman was only half complete, and its use simply slowed down time, making it of no real use. Only, Tang Yun was unwilling to just throw away the talisman he had spent resources on, hence he decided to keep it until better times. At the very least, he could sell it for a decent amount of money. After which he pulled out the talismans and tossed them into the air. Not only does he need to cultivate, but he also needs to create nine middle-class mascots. Gao Chengming and Lu Wu have tried to kill Tang Yun more than once during his time in the inner sect, and so they don't have long to go. Three months had passed outside and four and a half years inside the tower. Tang Yun's soul cultivation was now at the eighth level. As soon as Tang Yun stepped out of the tower, there were already many disciples and elders waiting for him. The elders began to ask Tang Yun if he had had a good time and if he had become stronger. Tang Yun replied that he had become many times stronger and that he felt as if he could take down Ouyang Qian with just one punch. Hearing this, Shen Qingfeng decided to tell Tang Yun a piece of news. Elder Pan is unwilling to accept his defeat and offered the sacred flame of the golden dragon if he defeats Pan An. Tang Yun was slightly surprised and acknowledged that this was the best news he could hear about, and since they were willing to give him such a valuable item so easily, he agreed. He hadn't absorbed the true flame of the Violet Phoenix, and so he would be able to combine it with the Golden Dragon Flame and absorb them, making his Flame of Life principles much stronger. Pang Shiwen told Pang An that he had arranged for a duel between him and Tang Yun, and then asked if he could handle it. Pang An asked his uncle not to worry about it, as Tang Yun doesn't even have a chance of winning. Pan Shiyuan praised his nephew and ordered him to go and teach Tang Yun a lesson now. Pang An then approached Tang Yun and ordered him to duck if he wasn't ready for their battle. But Tang Yun refused to bow down since Pang An was going to die anyway. The disciples thought that Tang Yun had lost his mind because Pang An was much stronger than Gaoyang Wushuang and Ouyang Qian. The fact that Tang Yun had climbed higher only showed that his talent was higher, but not his fighting power. Pang Shiyuan started to taunt Shen Qingfeng beforehand but the latter warned that anyone who doubted Tang Yun would end up in the grave. Pang An said that although Tang Yun had reached the ninth floor, he had been doing his own daily training and was now just a step away from the soul refinement realm. To which Tang Yun replied that in that case, Pang An was only a fly for him to arrive. Pang An laughed and unleashed his aura to silence the arrogant Tang Yun. Immediately afterward, he used the technique of floating shadows, creating four mirror images. The disciples were shocked to see such a powerful technique, because using this technique, Pang An would become so fast that he could not be seen, only his images could be seen. Pang Shiyuan said that Pang An's strength level while using the Soaring Shadows could match any person from the Soul Refinement Realm, which implied that Tang Yun was no opponent to him. Shen Wand began to ponder the fact that Tang Yun would not be able to react to such a fast opponent, due to which he would lose, and only Shen Qingfeng continued to believe that Tang Yun would win this fight. Circling around Tang Yun, Pang An advised him to surrender, as there was no way Tang Yun could defeat him. Tang Yun grinned since the opponent was too boastful and said that one moved like a snail. Immediately after, Pang An picked up the moment and attacked Tang Yun from the back. The elders were scared that Tang Yun might die and tried to warn him of the attack. And Pang Shiyuan on the other hand scoffed as it was already too late. And victory would be his. Just as suddenly Tang Yun used the time-slowing talisman, because of which all of Pan Ani's speed images were dispelled. Pang An himself couldn't understand why he had slowed down so much. But Tang Yun explained that it was all because of him, as he had slowed down the time around him, and now the speed that Pang An was so proud of had become nothing. Pang An simply couldn't understand it, and wanted to know how such a thing was even possible. But Tang Yun explained to Pang An that he had lost immediately after striking him. Flopping down on the ground, Pang An struggled to say that he couldn't lose. Tang Yun apologized and said that he had won. As soon as the fight was over, Pang Shiwan immediately rushed to his dying nephew and Shen Wand and Shen Qingfeng started praising Tang Yun for doing the impossible for his level. The disciples were dumbfounded that Tang Yun had won, 
for this meant that he was now the third strongest in their division. And this was despite being only at the eighth level of soul cultivation. Tang Yun approached Shen Qing Feng and thanked him for never ceasing to believe in him. After which Shen Qing Feng praised him for the work he had done. Shen Qing Feng asked Pang Xiuan where his reward was, and the latter was forced to accept his defeat immediately after which Pang Xiuan extended a flame to Shen Qing Feng. Shen Qing Feng threw the flame to Tang Yun and said that the latter had done more to receive it. Pang Xiuan said that he was a man of his word and asked Tang Yun to tell him what he needed and that he would give it to him if he had it. He thought that he had everything under control since Tang Yun was just a simple disciple and had no way of knowing about anything worthwhile. Since the elder suggested it, Tang Yun called the Bodhicitta hearts and dragon blood leaves. Hearing about these items, Pang Xiuan's eyes popped out of his orbits and he was forced to admit that he didn't have this. Then Tang Yun asked if the elder had snow jade bone ginseng and jade dragon saliva, but the elder didn't have either. Tang Yun continued asking, naming nine colored lotuses and iridescent moon orchid cores, and then the elder bowed his head and said that this too was passing by. Tang Yun asked the elder why he says to ask what he wants if Pang Shiyuan doesn't have it. Some disciples were shocked that the elder was so poor that he didn't even have what an ordinary disciple asked for, while most of the disciples hadn't even heard of such ingredients and thought that they were too valuable and that the elder just didn't want to give them away, which made it clear to everyone that this was the reason why the elder offered to personally choose the reward. Because of all this gossip, the elder became angry and told Tang Yun that all these items were too expensive and that even the elders of the immortal sect didn't have anything like this. He couldn't understand how an ordinary disciple could know about such things, and suspected that Shen Qing Feng was behind it. Since the elder was so poor, Tang Yun suggested that he compromise and apologize to Shen Qing Feng in front of everyone. The elder was stunned by such a thing and tried to object, but Tang Yun asked why the man kept resisting. After all, it was the easiest thing to do, and since it had gotten this far then, Suddenly the elder shouted that he was willing to do it, and bowing before Shen Qing Feng, he asked for forgiveness since the blame for what had happened lay entirely on him, and that he hoped to earn forgiveness. Rubbing his beard, Shen Qing Feng said that since the latter had apologized, he would not be so petty. Immediately afterward, he turned around and shouted out to Tang Yun that he remembered everything, and that he didn't have long left. The disciples were slightly stunned by what they saw but they were still discussing how Tang Yun had made the elder apologize by showing a good side of himself. But because of this, Tang Yun is in the crosshairs of many people, and his future would not be easy. Shen Qing Feng told Tang Yun that they had to go, and that he would take him to the head since Tang Yun had reached the ninth floor and would definitely be rewarded for it. As they approached the great hall of the alchemy division, Shen Qing Feng and Tang Yun heard the angry head shout. Shen Qing Feng asked what was going on to which the disciple replied that the head was trying to create a recovery pill, but all her attempts were even. Shen Qing Feng realized that since Shen Subin wasn't in the mood, this wasn't the best time to meet, and so he told Tang Yun that it was better for him to leave, and he would definitely bring Tang Yun to her afterwards. Tang Yun agreed with the deacon, while thinking that without his help, the disciple wouldn't be able to handle the pill. Shen Subin tried to prepare the pill, but black smoke was coming out of the cauldron. As soon as Shen Qing Feng walked in, she admitted that she had messed up, and that it was hard to count how many times something like this had happened. She does everything exactly according to the formula, and yet nothing works. Shen Qing Feng tried to reassure my lady by asking her not to be disappointed in herself, as he was sure that she would succeed. Shen Subin said that she hoped so too. She thought about having the master by her side, for he would definitely help her with this, as suddenly a familiar voice could be heard behind her. He said that in alchemy you can't follow exactly as written, and that if she kept doing that, she wouldn't succeed. Seeing the stranger, Shen Qing Feng immediately covered his head and asked the stranger who he was and what he was doing here, and Shen Subing was happy to see the master. Hearing her, Shen Qing Feng was shocked that it was the master of her chapter. Tang Yun asked Subin if she had forgotten the conditions under which he would be her teacher. Immediately after, she covered her mouth fearfully as she had forgotten that the master had asked her not to call him that in front of strangers. Afterward, she admitted that she was very sorry about what had happened, because she had gotten too excited about his appearance and forgot about it. Tang Yun stroked Subin and said that it was fine since Ching Feng was not among the outsiders. Seeing someone stroking his milady, Shen Ching Feng's eyes almost flew out of his orbits while Subin admired the master. After which, Shen Ching Feng asked her who this person was, so Subin smilingly introduced him to this man who was her master. She told him that the master's alchemy skills knew no bounds 
and that he was the one who had given her the formula she used to create the soul restoration pill. After listening to Subin, Shen Qingfeng apologized to the master for being so rude and asked what sect he was from, what mountain he was located on, and who his teacher was. Shen Qingfeng suspected that the master might be a potential threat since he was hiding, and therefore wanted to make sure of everything. Tong Yun said that Shen Qingfeng only needed to know one thing, and that was that his path was the path of life principles. Shen Subin asked Shen Qingfeng not to worry about the master since she trusted him, and the latter was forced to agree. He knows that Shen Subing has been practicing alchemy all her life, and that she has no worldly experience yet, so he should keep an eye on her master. Shen Subin asked the master how he realized she needed help, to which the master replied that it was just a coincidence. Tang Yun said she was embarrassing her, because he had given her the formula, and she hadn't made a single pill yet, to which Subin replied that she does exactly what the formula says. Tang Yun explained that the formula was only for understanding, it was a plan of action, and the details had to be finalized by himself. After that, he ordered her to watch him prepare a pill without taking her eyes off. Shen Subin was happy that she was about to be taught a lesson, and Shen Qingfeng asked why the master didn't wait for the boiler to be cleaned, because there was still sludge in the boiler. Tang Yun said that even the medicinal residue contained healing properties, and that he was using it to process it into a pill. Immediately after which, Tang Yun used the fire on the cauldron. Shen Qingfeng asked how it was even possible to create a pill from leftovers, since he had never heard of such a thing. To which Subin replied that it was but a trifle, for her master had once created a pill out of thin air. Just as suddenly, Tang Yun began to condense a pill from the leftovers, from which Shen Qingfeng was shocked by his speed, while Subin admired his skill. After which, Tang Yun opened the lid of the cauldron, but there was no pill inside. Seeing the empty cauldron, Shen Qingfeng realized that he was right, that there was no way to create a pill from the leftovers, and asked if the cauldron was damaged. Shen Subin couldn't believe that her master could screw up like this, and probably Shen Qingfeng already thought that he was a fraud, and if so, Tang Yun said that there was no word for fail in his vocabulary, and called out the soul restoration pill. Immediately afterward, a pill was formed from the flames. Seeing this, Subin shrieked that she had never once doubted him, and Shen Qingfeng couldn't accept the fact that it was possible. He tried, but there was no way he could realize that it was even possible to prepare the soul recovery pill from leftovers. After inspecting the pill, Shen Subing praised the master as he had prepared a top-class pill. As soon as Shen Qingfeng heard this, his eyes popped out of his orbits, for this person's skill is truly boundless, and he must be ahead from a sacred sect. Tang Yun said that there was nothing special about making this pill, and ordered Subin to make sure she mastered the technique since he wouldn't help her next time. Suddenly, Shen Qingfeng fell to his knees and asked the master to help him avenge his lady's father. Shen Subing tried to ask what he was doing, but the man blurted out that if the senior could help them, they would be able to avenge the incident that happened many years ago. Tang Yun asked what was the nature of the matter so troubling them, and Shen Subin revealed that her father used to be the head of the sacred sect. But the second elder, Gongsun Yangchun, wanted to take his place. It ended with her father being abolished by the patriarch and expelled from the sect. He died in despair. After telling her, Tang Yun realized why she was so desperate to ask to be his disciple. She wants revenge. Shen Subin clenched her trembling fist and shouted that after all this, Gongsun Yanchun became the head of the alchemy division, and she joined the Huangfu sect to one day quench her thirst for revenge. Shen Qingfeng bowed to the master and pleaded for him to help my lady as he must be from a sacred sect. Tang Yun asked Subin if she wanted him to take revenge on her, but Subin shouted out no, for she personally wants to exterminate that bastard. Hearing this, Shen Qingfeng tried to contradict her, but Tang Yun praised her, as she herself must take revenge, otherwise she would never be able to become strong. Shen Qingfeng explained that taking revenge on Gongsun Yang Chun would obviously be difficult since he had power and great influence concentrated in his hands. Tang Yun decided to make this task easier for Subin and ordered her to get ready since he was going to teach her one ability. After which, he touched her forehead, and they were surrounded by symbols that surprised Shen Subing. Tang Yun explained that he had prepared one ability especially for her, and its name was Ice Writing. If she could master this technique, she would become many times stronger and be able to quench her thirst for revenge. Hearing this, Shen Qingfeng was shocked. He agreed that the senior was a master of his craft, but still asked if it would help much. After all, Milady had spent years internalizing the best abilities that she had inherited from her father. Shen Subin said that it was an incredibly powerful ability, and that it was much better than what she had gotten from her father, because it was only by understanding the ability that she was able to go to the next level. 
Shen Qingfeng was stunned by what he heard, for the senior had managed to recreate a top-level skill of the Heavenly Punishment continent, which was literally impossible. Tang Yun, on the other hand, was pondering that since he was a great emperor of the upper world, the technique he had created could make it to the top of the Celestial Punishment continent without much trouble. Tang Yun said that he had done what he wanted to do, and said goodbye. He was going to absorb the artifacts he had obtained, and so he wanted to return to the Tower of Space and Time. And Shen Subing and Shen Qingfeng bowed to the departing master. Shen Subin advised Shen Qingfeng to leave to go about her business while she tried to create a soul recovery pill. Meanwhile in Lu Wu's cave, Elder Lu Wu was just furious since Tang Yun had killed all of his personal disciples, and he was shouting about killing him. Just as suddenly, Pan Shiyuan entered his cave and said that he understood him. Lu Wu was surprised to see Elder Pan and asked if Tang Yun had killed any of his disciples. Pan Shiyuan said that it almost happened. In fact, Tang Yun had maimed his two nephews very badly. And on top of that, Tang Yun had insulted him very badly in public because of which he wanted revenge. Lu Wu explained that killing Tang Yun was not as easy as Shen Qingfeng, and apparently the division head was protecting him. Pang Shiwan replied that it was unnecessary to worry since Kong had already thought of everything. He had given Tang Yun the Golden Dragon Flame, which meant that Tang Yun would surely go to the Tower of Space and Time to absorb the flame, which was a great opportunity for them. He explained that he would take care of Tang Yun's murder himself, and that he hoped that in turn, Lu Wu would put in a good word to his father for his son. Elder Lu Wu's father is an elder of one of the divisions of the Immortal Sect. And if they managed to get in touch, then everything was not in vain. Lu Wu immediately agreed to talk to his father if Pang Shiyuan killed Tang Yun. On the night of the same day, Pang Shiyuan asked his disciple if he was sure that Tang Yun had seen Tang Yun enter that tower, and the latter told him that he had no doubts since he had personally seen it, after which he handed the elder a token to enter the tower. Pan Shiyuan thanked the disciple and asked what he could do for him in return, but the latter refused the reward since he had done what he had to do. Pang Shiyuan said that he had thought of a way to thank his disciple and poked his finger into his forehead. At the last gasp, the student asked why he was killed. But Pang Shiwan said that one was a fool, for he couldn't be sure that the disciple wouldn't tell anyone about it. Meanwhile, Tang Yun meditated in the tower and reflected on the fact that after absorbing all the artifacts, his strength had increased significantly, pushing him closer to killing Lu Wu and the others. The only problem is that his victims are the elders of the inner sect, and if he kills them not covertly, he will be thrown out of here. So he pondered on how to kill the elders covertly. Just as suddenly, an assassin appeared over Tang Yun and attacked, shouting that Tang Yun had lived enough. Tang Yun managed to react to the sudden attack at the last moment, after which he abruptly turned around and repelled the enemy's attack, from which an explosion occurred, and Tang Yun and the assassin ended up on opposite sides of the arena. Pong Xuan was shocked by this and tried to understand how a mere disciple was able to repel his attack. Suddenly, Tang Yun said that he realized the identity of the attacker because he was at the sixth level of soul refinement, which meant that he was an elder of the inner sect. He also found out which tower Tang Yun was in, which meant that he was from the pill refining division. Pong Xiuan asked what he was going to do with this information, because by going to the other world, Tang Yun wouldn't be able to do anything. Hearing this, Tang Yun said that the assassin did not fit Lu Wu's character, which meant that Pang Xiuan was in front of him. Pang Xiuan tore off his mask and praised Tang Yun, then asked what he would do with this information. After all, he would die within the confines of this tower, so no one would know who the killer was. The tower is sealed, and there is no way to escape. Tang Yun smirked as just a moment ago, he was contemplating on how to do it secretly, and fate itself had given him this chance. If he took the opportunity to initiate his death, he would be able to secretly get rid of Lu Wu and the others. Tang Yun took out some talismans and shouted that even dying would not let the elder live a peaceful life. Immediately after which the elder attacked Tang Yun shouting that he was too cocky. But Tang Yun shouted that he would only die if he took Pang Shiwan with him. After which, he cast the talismans of Heavenly Hurricane, Spatial Destruction, and Silent Death, which projected a massive explosion that wiped out the Tower of Space and Time. Trying to protect himself from the explosion, Pang Shiyuan tried to understand how a mere disciple could have such strong talismans, as he had to use all of his spiritual power to protect himself. The disciples panicked as there was a sudden explosion, and most importantly it happened in the 678 tower where Tang Yun was training, which meant that he was dead. Standing on the ruins of the tower, Pang Shiyuan was shocked that he was one step away from losing. But the main thing was that Tang Yun was probably dead, which meant he had accomplished his mission. Looking at the flying elder's back, 
Tang Yun smirked as he believed in his death, which meant his plan had worked. A few moments later, a panicked Shen Wand and Shen Qingfeng rushed into the arena. Immediately after, a disciple reported that the tower where Tang Yun was training exploded for unknown reasons, and due to the force of the explosion, Tang Yun probably died. Upon hearing this, Shen Qingfeng was stunned. Shen Wan shouted out that the towers didn't explode by themselves, and that there was obviously something wrong here. This indicates that there was an assassin here, and he was probably from the Pill Creation Division. Tears sprang from Shen Qingfeng's eyes, and with a clenched fist, he shouted that he would ask the head to personally look into the matter, and no matter who killed Tang Yun, the murderer would not be able to escape punishment. The next day, all the elders gathered in the main hall of the Pill Creation Division. Only Pang Xioyan was absent. Bing Qing asked where he was. Lu Wu replied that Elder Pan had gone to the Immortal Sect to see his son and had not yet returned. He was disappointed in Elder Pan's mediocrity as he had made too much noise trying to kill Tang Yun, causing Elder Pan to go into hiding for a while as Lu Wu himself could be suspected. Bing Qing said that in that case, they wouldn't wait for him, and said that last night, the tower where Tang Yun was practicing exploded abruptly, and his corpse was never found. After personally investigating, she was able to find traces of the battle, and apparently, the killer knew which tower Tang Yun was training in, and since he was able to blow up the tower, the killer was at the sole refinement level. The elders were stunned that a mere disciple who had conquered the ninth floor had been killed, as it was a pity to lose such a talent, and besides, no one would have thought that they could have such evil people. Bin King shouted that the murderer had committed the unpardonable sin, so she ordered all the elders to unite and investigate together. Those who refuse will be treated as accomplices to the crime. Tang Yun's tombstone was placed in the backyard of Lingshan Garden, and the common disciples wept over his death. Dan Yu wanted to know why Tang Yun had to die. He cried out about how unfair the world was for taking away such a good man. A person appeared behind the disciples and said that he was sorry since Tang Yun died too easily. Pang He said that he had yet to settle scores with Tang Yun. The simple disciples asked Pang He how he dared to say such a thing and ordered Pang He and his men to leave the place, as they were not welcome here. But Dan Yu asked his fellow students to calm down, and asked Pang He what he was forgetting here. Pang He said that he had heard that Tang Yun had died, so he had come to pay his respects. Immediately afterward, he ordered his boys to act and they rushed to desecrate the grave of a pathetic mere student. After that, one of Pang He's men destroyed Tang Yun's tombstone. Seeing this, Dan Yu swore that he would fight them until he was unconscious and the ordinary disciples attacked Pang He and his men. Pang He chuckled at the fact that a bunch of pathetic ordinary disciples dared to go against his will, and ordered them to be dealt with. After which, his underlings started beating up ordinary disciples, mocking how pathetic they were without Tang Yun. Pang He set fire to the remains of Tang Yun's tombstone, and said that no matter how strong Tang Yun was, he was still just trash. And if the others decided to become strong, they would face an equally insignificant death. Seeing what Pang He was doing, Dan Yu promised out of his last strength that he wouldn't just get away with it. Pang He's underlings laughed at the words of the lowlifes, and Pang He ordered them not to erect Tang Yun's tombstone again, or else next time, it wouldn't just be him who would be broken. All this time, Tang Yun had been watching the fight from behind a tree. He decided that he had to deal with Pang He first. Late at night on Mat Pan, Pang He laughed at the fact that Tang Yun had finally died and revealed that he and his subordinates had destroyed his grave today. Pang An praised his brother for what he had done, but added that if he were him, he would also piss on the grave. Just as suddenly, a stranger appeared behind Pang He's back, who praised Pang An's idea, and said that he would use it on them. Pang An and Pang He were shocked that someone had managed to sneak up on them and ordered him to identify himself, to which Tang Yun replied that he was their death and swung his fist. Pang An was angered by the stranger's insolence and decided to test what the stranger could do. But Tang Yun repelled the enemy's attack, sending him into the opposite wall of the cave. With a shake of his hand, Tang Yun said that one was weaker than he thought, and Pang He was shocked that his brother had been put down in one blow and asked how it was even possible. Pang An asked the stranger what the stranger had against him and his brother. Tang Yun then decided to reveal himself and took off his mask to let the brothers know who would be responsible for their deaths. Seeing his face, the brothers cried out as they all thought that Tang Yun was dead. Tang Yun revealed that Elder Pan had tried to kill him, but the latter couldn't even think of Tang Yun faking his death, with the help of which Tang Yun can kill the brothers being out of suspicion. Hearing about it, the brothers agreed that it was indeed tricky. Shivering in fear, Pang An said that their situation could not be envied. Suddenly, Pang He fell to his knees and started begging for mercy. 
shouting that it was all his uncle's fault, while he himself had nothing to do with the assassination attempt. But Tang Yun refused to spare him as he had seen everything and Pang He was responsible for his own demise. Therefore, he released some soul energy to destroy the Pan brothers, leaving them wondering why they had crossed the path of this monster in the first place. After a moment, the flames dissipated, and not even ashes remained of the Pan brothers. The next in line would be Pan Shi Wan and Lu Wu, but the problem was that they were at the soul purification level. So killing them stealthily would be a difficult task. Just as suddenly, light began to emanate from Tang Yun, and Tang Yun realized that the little monkey was about to wake up. After he came out of the canyon, the monkey had fallen into a deep sleep, and he would never have thought that it would wake up at such a good time. After the monkey woke up, Tang Yun would greatly strengthen, and then he would easily be able to deal with those two. Tang Yun was about to leave, but before he did, he wanted to leave Pang Shiyuan a gift. The next morning, Pang Shiyuan had finished recovering, which meant he could no longer worry about the chapter cracking him up. Suddenly a disciple ran into him shouting that he had bad news. The disciple said that Pang An and Pang He's soul lanterns went out, causing the elder to be stunned. He couldn't believe that such a thing had happened. The student said he personally went to check and found not a speck of dust, plus the killer had left a message on the wall. Upon hearing this, Pan Shiyuan asked in anger what the message was, and the disciple told him that on the wall it said, Pan Shiyuan you are next. Upon hearing this, Pang Shiyuan threw away his disciple and started screaming as his nephews were killed. He swore he would personally kill their killer. Suddenly, Lu Wu walked into his cave and said that he had great news. He said that the immortal sect had taken Shen Subing's bitch, and he could now avoid hiding. But in the next instant, he saw how angry Elder Pan was. Lu Wu felt uneasy as he came with good news and the Elder looks very fierce. Meanwhile, in the garden of Lingxian. Dan Yu asked if anyone had heard the news that the head of their division had been captured by the immortal sect, and sentenced to execution for a serious crime, to which one of the disciples replied that they had heard that, and that Deacon Shen was currently thinking about how to save her. Tang Yun happened to overhear their conversation, and he wondered what Subin could have been captured for. Therefore, he immediately rushed to Shen Qingfeng to find out what had happened. Shen Qingfeng was in the main hall of the division at this moment. He knew that only a master could save my lady, but he didn't know where to find him. He tried to think of a way out of this situation as quickly as possible. Suddenly, the master entered the main hall and immediately asked what his disciple had been grabbed for. Seeing him, Shen Qingfeng felt a little calmer, and he began to plead with the master to let him help Subin, as the third elder of the alchemy division from the immortal sect had taken her away. Tang Yun ordered Shen Qingfeng to tell the full story of what had happened. Yi Shen Qingfeng revealed that Head Tang had taken the soul restoration pill, but soon after waking up, she fell back into a coma. After investigating the elders from the holy sect, they learned that the original diagnosis of the disease was wrong, causing them to exacerbate an already dire situation. Tang Yun asked what was his disciples' fault, after all, she was only following their orders. To which Shen Qing Feng replied that according to the elders, it was because of the pill that the sect head's condition worsened. Tang Yun immediately said that this was nonsense and that the elders were wrong, whereupon he ordered Shen Qing Feng to wait for him here while he personally took care of it. Shen Qing Feng bowed to the master and expressed his great gratitude for his help. After a while, Tang Yun reached the entrance of the immortal sect. All the immortal elders had reached the divine soul realm, although they didn't pose a threat to Tang Yun, but he wasn't going to fight them since they might reveal his identity. Moreover, he doesn't even know where Subin is now, as suddenly his musings were interrupted when he saw a familiar figure below, in whom he recognized Tantai Jundi of the Huanfu Trading House. As soon as Tantai Jundi approached the entrance, he was immediately greeted by the elders. Seeing this, Tang Yun decided that he shouldn't miss this opportunity, and so he immediately descended to the ground in front of the guards. The guards reacted instantly and demanded that the stranger stop and identify himself. But Tang Yun ignored their requests and ordered them to show him the man in charge. Upon hearing this, the guards ordered him to leave if life was precious. In response, Tang Yun released some aura and asked who they were to threaten him. Fifth Elder of the Alchemy Division Chen Shuyue thanked Tantai Junde for the pill he brought. But the latter asked not to thank him as he was only following the orders of the head. And the fourth elder Lu Yi said that the only problem is that this pill can only contain the disease temporarily. And if nothing changes, he is afraid that the worst will happen. But he was glad for it, as he would be able to take her place after Head Tan died. Tan Tai Junde said he believes the head will get better. Suddenly, one of the guards ran in and shouted that someone had broken into the sect. 
Upon hearing this, Lu Yi became furious and shouted that he would personally kill this person for doing such a thing when their head was dying. Lu Yi walked to the threshold of the main hall and asked the stranger if he was tired of living, to which Tang Yun replied that they were all sick of living since they dared to take his student. Hearing how brazen that one was, Lu Yi shouted that he would teach a lesson on behalf of the immortal sect and began to gather energy. Suddenly Tan Tai Junde walked up to them and shrieked that he didn't expect to see him here. Elder Lu Yi was surprised that Deacon Tan Tai knew this person. Seeing that Tan Tai Junde was treating this man with respect, the fifth and fourth elder realized that they should do the same. Tan Tai Junde went up to the master and told the elders that it was this senor who had given him the life-extending pill. Hearing this, Lu Yi panicked as the man in front of him was probably too strong and decided to stay as far away from him as possible. Tang Yun asked if their conflict was now resolved, and Lu Yi apologized that he had overreacted as he thought a criminal had wandered in. Tan Tai Junde asked the senor what had checked him out, to which Tang Yun replied that the immortal sect had taken his female disciple, hence he had come to retrieve her. Tan Tai Junde asked Lu Yi if they could be alone together with the seniors, and the latter immediately allowed mentioning that he had some unfulfilled business to attend to. Lu Yi wasn't worried about what might happen. He revealed that since Subin's crime had been officially proven by the second elder, only the immortal sect head could release Subin from her shackles. Except now she was in a coma. Tang Yun said that there was nothing wrong and that he would have no problem curing her, after which the head would personally release his disciple. Hearing this, Chen Shuyue was shocked as even a second elder couldn't heal head Tang. Tong Yun assured them that he would handle the treatment and ordered them to take him to the head while she was still breathing. Watching the others leave, Lu Wu scolded to himself since if the stranger really could cure the head, he would have prevented him beforehand. Chen Shuyue guided Senor to Tang Xinyan who was in a coma and allowed him to begin treatment. Tang Yun gathered the energy on his fingertips and touched the forehead of the chapter, scanning its state. Lu Yi was curious as to what the stranger was going to do since even the elders of the sacred sect couldn't do this. After finishing his inspection, Tang Yun said that he understood the problem, and said that the second elder of the alchemy department was incredibly stupid. After all, the three souls and seven spirits of their head were seriously injured. But the elder said that only her celestial and central souls were injured. Upon hearing this, Chen Shuyue was stunned at how serious their head's injuries were, and asked if he could help her. And Lu Yi mentally laughed since with such injuries, only the Almighty would be able to heal the head. Looking at Head Tang, Tang Yun said that he could cure this disease. He didn't doubt it for a moment, since in his previous life, one of his disciples had been more seriously injured, compared to which the Tang Head's illness was a mere trifle. Lu Yi asked the Signore to be careful with the Head, so the second elder said that it was almost impossible to cure the Head's illness. One wrong move and she would die. To which Tang Yun replied that the second elder only said so because of his mediocrity, after which he created a flame on his finger and ordered him to watch carefully, after which he touched the forehead of the head of Thane beginning to heal her. Immediately afterward, Tang Xinyin came out of her coma and asked where she was and what had happened to her. Chen Shuyue with Tan Tai Junde rejoiced at the recovery of the head. Afterward, Tang Yun told her to help Subin, and the head asked what it all meant. Chen Shuyue leaned into the head's ear and recounted everything that had happened while she was in a coma. After hearing everything, Tang Xinyin stood up and declared that Shen Subin was not involved in any crime, and ordered her to be released from her shackles. Lu Yi was furious because the senor had managed to cure the head who was in a hopeless situation, thus ruining his plans. Tan Tai Junde favored Shinner since his power knew no bounds. The elders of the immortal sect were powerless, but he managed to help the head. Tang Xinyin examined herself and asked why she felt so healthy, to which Tan Tai Junde replied that the senora beside them had healed her. Immediately after, Tang Xinyin bowed to him and acknowledged that she could not put into words how grateful she was to him. Tang Yun said that he was happy to help her, but he was only doing all of this because of Shen Subin. Meanwhile, in the immortal sex prison, the echoes of Subin's beating could be heard. The elder grabbed Subin by the face and lifted her up, asking why she was so principled. After all, if she simply agreed to become his, he would spare her this torment. Shen Subin jerked her head away from his hand and said that only when she died would she possibly become his. The elder said that now that the second head had been executed, and the head was at death's door, he had a good chance of taking the division head's place, and so he gave her one last chance to change her mind. Shen Subin tearfully shouted that she would not change her mind, and that she would rather die. The elder stared at Shen Subin and called her a creature. Immediately afterward, he tore her clothes, and Subin, panicking, asked what he wanted to do, to which he replied that since she had one foot in the grave, he could have some fun before that. Hearing this, Shen Subin started to call for help, 
but there was no one in the prison. Laughing, the elder told her that no one would come to her aid and reached for her breast. Suddenly, Tang Yun appeared behind him and shouted for Subin to move. Immediately afterward, he punched the elder. Upon seeing the master, Shen Subing started sobbing again, and the elder sprang to his feet and demanded an explanation, since a stranger dared to strike him. Suddenly, he heard footsteps at the sight of someone approaching him, who he clearly wasn't expecting to be here. Tang Xinyin explained to the elder that it was actually him who was bored of living. The elder was surprised to see the head and asked if she was better, to which Chapter Tan replied that as he could see she had recovered, whereupon she apologized for ruining his dreams of becoming the next chapter. The elder began to bang his head on the floor, explaining that he had said it without thinking, and apologized for such a disrespectful act. After that, he turned to Elder Lu Yi and began to ask him to help him. Lu Yi wasn't going to lose this idiot as he could still help him. Hence he asked Subin to spare the elder as he was following orders. Trying to get a chance at salvation, the elder agreed with Lu Yi's words. But Tang Yun said that there would be no mercy. After all, the elder had treated his female disciple inappropriately, for which he should be punished. Tang Xinyin ordered Chen Shuyu to destroy the elder's cultivation. She wasn't going to let someone who was going to take her place go unpunished. And besides, there was no way she could refuse her savior. Approaching the elder, Chen Shuyue said that from now on, he was finished. But the elder refused to put up with it and attacked the culprit Tang Yun. Lifting his veil, Tang Yun said that one was not even worthy of his attention. After which, his eyes turned red as he applied primordial divine eyes, which caused the elder to lose the ability to move. And Chen Shuyue took advantage of the moment to strike the elder. Immediately after which, Tang Yun created a golden sword and slit the elder's throat. In his last moments of life, the elder said he just wanted to live. Tang Xinyin was about to count out Tang Yun for killing the elder, but Tang Yun interrupted her, asking if there would be any problems because of this. After all, he had let the elder die quickly. Under so much pressure, Tang Xinyin was unable to cross Tang Yun. After all, Zhou Wuyun was not much weaker than her but the person in front of her was only able to kill him with a single blow, causing her to choose to be on guard with him. Tang Yun released Shen Subing from the chains and carried her towards the exit. Subin touched the master and for the first time felt how warm he really was. After a while, Tang Yun brought Subin back to the division and explained to Shen Qingfeng that he had already given her pills with which she would recover in a few days. Hence, he asked Shen Qingfeng to follow her in the meantime as he had unfinished business. Shen Qingfeng was surprised that the master was able to cure Head Tang, kill Zhou Wuyun, and save Madam in such a short period of time. Because of which, he could not help but recognize that the master was even too capable. Walking out of the building, Tang Yun asked Tan Dai Junde why he was following him. In response, the deacon handed Tang Yun a ring and explained that these were the resources he was talking about. Tang Yun was surprised that the deacon had managed to get all of this in just half a year, but still praised him for his efforts. He was pleased with the deacon's speed, as with these materials, he would be able to greatly improve his weapons and become even stronger. Tang Yun then hid the ring and took out the recipe for the life extension pill. While handing over the recipe, Tang Yun asked the deacon to get him the highest quality fire stones if they were available on the market. The deacon thanked Tang Yun and promised to consider the stone proposal. As soon as Tan Dai Junde left, Tang Yun took out the bag and felt that the monkey was about to wake up. Stepping away from the division, Tang Yun once again took out the bag and ordered the monkey to come out. Suddenly the monkey started laughing and stood up in a weird pose and shouted that he was living again. Immediately after, Tang Yun slapped the monkey on the head and ordered it to behave normally. Monkey agreed and rubbing his head in pain told him that he had been promoted to the fourth stage of reincarnation, equivalent to the spirit soul realm of human cultivators, after which he asked what he could do for his master. Tong Yun explained that he wanted to kill someone and ordered the monkey to follow his instructions. After a while, Pang Shiyuan was cursing in his cave, since so many days had passed since the murder of Pang An and Pang He, and the bunch of idiots investigating it still hadn't found the killers. Suddenly, two people showed up in the elder's cave asking why he was so angry. Pang Shiyuan was surprised since there was something wrong with the person in front of him and he couldn't identify him. Hence, he asked who they were. Tang Yun asked the elder not to worry and explained that he just wanted to ask one question. He asked if Pang Shiyuan had acted alone when he killed Tang Yun a few days ago. Pang Shiyuan drew his sword and asked the stranger what he was carrying and demanded that he stop desecrating his name. Tang Yun said it was ridiculous and took off the veil of his mask ordering the man to stop pretending and look him in the eyes. Pang Shiyuan was shocked that Tang Yun had survived and said that it couldn't be true. 
To which Tang Yun replied that such a lowlife couldn't kill him, after which he confessed that he was the one who had killed the elder's nephews. Hearing this, Peng Shiwan lost control with rage and lunged at Tang Yun. Tang Yun, on the other hand, told the already waiting monkey that he could act. Immediately after, the monkey repelled Elder Pan Shiyuan's attack, but because the elder was too weak, his weapon broke and the monkey's attack damaged him. The monkey asked the elder not to make him laugh, as he couldn't even take one hit, even though he was going to fight the master. Peng Shiyuan asked Tang Yun where he got such a strong spirit animal. After all, Tang Yun is only at the eighth level of soul cultivation. To which Tang Yun replied that he was much stronger than what the elder thought. He then demanded that the elder answer his questions. Peng Shiyuan shouted that he wouldn't say anything. He was afraid to tell the truth because his son was under Lu Yi's care. And if he betrayed Lu Wu now, his son would be in trouble. Tang Yun told the elder that whether the elder wanted to speak or not, it was clearly not up to him. Immediately after which his eyes flashed red, Yi Tang Yun once again asked the elder who was helping him. Unable to hold back, Pang Shiwan revealed that Lu Wu was helping him. He offered to kill Tang Yun, for which Lu Wu would cover for him and prove his innocence. Tang Yun found this quite interesting, and asked where Lu Wu was now, to which the elder replied that Lu Wu had gone to the immortal sect to check on his father, and he would not return for the time being. Tang Yun said that Lu Wu was lucky to survive, and dispelled the spell. Immediately afterward, Peng Shiwan asked Tang Yun what he had done to him, but Tang Yun wasn't going to talk to him, so he killed the elder saying that he would only get an answer in hell. In his last breath, Peng Shiyuan said that he shouldn't have messed with Tang Yun. After finishing killing one of the enemies, Tang Yun began to ponder over what he should do next. Lu Wu clearly had no plans to return anytime soon, so he would have to return to the life of a mere disciple. Three days later, Tang Yun arrived at the alchemy division and shouted that he was here to meet with the head. The elders inside the hall were surprised to hear this voice, and Shen Wanda asked if he had just heard it. Shen Wand replied that it sounded like Tang Yun's voice, and apparently they had just imagined it, and Shen Subin said that it was unlikely, as it couldn't be heard by three people at once. Suddenly, Tang Yun once again shouted that he had arrived to meet with the head. Immediately afterward, the elders rushed to the voice to see for themselves. Running up to Tang Yun, Shen Qingfeng grabbed his shoulders and tears flowed from his eyes. He asked if this was really Tang Yun or just a dream, to which Tang Yun replied that it was indeed him. And pulling Tang Yun close to him, Shen Qingfeng shouted about how happy he was that Tang Yun had returned. Then Shen Wand cried out that it was really Tang Yun and started laughing, and Shen Subing replied that she could see it, and asked Tang Yun what happened to him. Tang Yun reported that someone had attacked him that day, causing him to be seriously injured and having to use the talismans he had bought at a high price. He ended up taking refuge in the ruins of the tower. Shen Subin asked why didn't he show up until today. He replied that his wounds were too serious, and that he thought someone might take advantage of that to attack him again, so he had to go into hiding to mend his wounds. It was only today that he was able to make a full recovery, after which he returned to the sect. Shen Subin asked if he saw who attacked him. Tang Yun replied that he had seen it. It was the third elder Pan Shiyuan. Tang Yun said that he had climbed to the top of the tower and that he and Deacon Shen had won all the bets that day. But no one would have thought that the third elder would be so vindictive. When Tang Yun told him about this, he asked the head to bring justice to the elder. Shen Qingfeng clenched his fist and shouted that he was right in thinking that Pong Shiyuan was behind this. And now they knew exactly where he had disappeared to when the head started investigating Tang Yun's murder. The third was afraid that the head might realize everything at once. Shen Wan gloomily said that if Pang Shiyuan was alive right now, he would clearly be in trouble. Tang Yun was surprised that the elder had died and asked how it happened. To which Bing Ching replied that a few days ago, the third elder's body was found in his cave, which was the reason why he couldn't be punished. Looking closer, Bing Qing noticed that Tang Yun didn't even have a scratch on him. Hence, she wondered if he could be related to the third elder's death. Tang Yun said he was sorry because he personally wanted to hear the excuses. Tang Yun didn't want to reveal that he was involved in the death of the third person, so he pretended to be. Bing Xing then changed the subject, reminding Tang Yun that she had not yet rewarded him for climbing to the ninth floor of the Tower of Space and Time, and therefore she was curious as to what he would like to receive for it. Tang Yun asked the head to reward Deacon Shen instead of him, as without the deacon's support, he wouldn't have been able to become what he was now. Tang Yun was going to thank the deacon since he cared for him the most in this sect. Shen Qingfeng asked Tang Yun not to miss this chance, since the chapter doesn't often reward someone. But Tang Yun was persistent in his request, and asked again to reward the deacon. Since Tang Yun was so insistent on it, Bing Qing couldn't refuse his request. 
and so, she proposed Shen Qingfeng to take the place of a full elder since Pang Xiuan's place had been vacated. Hearing this, Shen Qingfeng tried to object as he felt that he was still not ready for this. Shen Wanda laughed and patted Shen Qingfeng's shoulder and asked him not to give up as he would let Tang Yun down. In the end, Shen Qingfeng decided to agree to become an elder and thanked my lady. Finished with the reward, Bingjing told Tang Yun that he could leave and ordered him to train as hard as before so as not to let them down in the future. As soon as Tang Yun left, Bingqing told the elders that she almost forgot that she had a task for them. Bingqing told them that the competition between the three clans would soon begin. So she ordered Wanda to inform the other elders and ordered Qingfeng to go back to the Lingshan Grass Garden and choose factotum disciples to serve the disciples participating in the competition. Shen Wanda asked if these competitions were not supposed to start only after two years, to which Subin replied that there was a strange change in the Land of Infinity that would cause the secret realm to be revealed sooner. Shen Qingfeng asked if Tang Yun could participate in this competition, which Subin immediately agreed with, as Tang Yun would be able to see other geniuses, and maybe even he would stop being so smug. Upon hearing this, Shen Qingfeng thanked my lady loudly. After a while in Lingshan's herb garden, Cao Bin asked Zhong Wu Xiao if she really had a meeting here. He wanted to find out since it was rumored that there was some ordinary disciple quite close to Jun Wu in this garden. To which Jun Wu replied that it was none of his business and ordered him to get the hell away from her. Cao Bin had started annoying her while she was still in the weapon division and he had followed her all the way to the alchemy division. Just as suddenly Dan Yu noticed that there were guests in their garden and immediately ran up to them, asking if there was anything he could do to help them. Jun Wu Xiao explained that she was a close friend of Tong Yun and asked if she could meet him. Upon hearing this, Dan Yu bowed his head and said that she had unfortunately come too late. After all, Tang Yun had died. Jun Wu Xiao was shocked by what she heard. She wanted to understand how such a thing could even happen, whereupon she stopped feeling her legs and sputtered and began to sob. Cao Bin was grateful to the Almighty for the help and took advantage of the situation by trying to comfort Jun Wu. Suddenly, Tang Yun appeared in front of them and immediately greeted Jun Wu Xiao. Seeing Tang Yun, Dan Yu was frightened and asked if he was a human or a ghost. Jun Wu Xiao looked Tang Yun in the eyes and asked if she was dreaming or if it was really him. Tang Yun stroked her and said that it was true him, alive and unharmed. Immediately afterward, Jun Wu threw herself into his arms and sobbed again. She admitted that she was incredibly scared. Tang Yun stroked Jun Wu once more and asked her not to worry since he had no plan to die anytime soon. Not intending to endure these courtesies any longer, Chao Bin stomped on the ground and ordered Tang Yun to get his filthy paws off of Jun Wu. It was only at this moment that Tang Yun noticed the stranger and asked Jun Wu who it was, to which she replied that it was Chao Bin, a disciple of the fifth elder of the weapon division, and he was also picking on her and pissing her off all the time. Hearing this, Tang Yun became gloomy, whereupon he asked Chao Bin if he was the most enviable groom. Chao Bin called Tang Yun a bastard and asked how dare a mere disciple speak in his presence. He then ordered Tang Yun to bow down and beg for mercy until he decided to finish him off. Tang Yun refused to bow down and said that Chao Bin was clearly not worthy of it. Unwilling to tolerate the pathetic mere disciple any longer, Chao Bin shouted that he would break his arms and legs, right after which he used an endless array of blades. Chong Xiao asked Tang Yun to be careful as Chao Bin is in the top 100 on the list of but Tang Yun didn't let her finish saying that he had everything under control. Immediately after which, his eyes turned red from using primordial divine eyes. Chao Bin's swords fell to the ground, and Chao Bin himself couldn't understand what was happening to him. And in the next instant, Tang Yun punched the one and ordered him to get the hell out of here. Walking over to the lying Chao Bing, Tang Yun reminded him that not long ago, he wanted to break all of his limbs. Hence he decided to let Chao Bing feel it personally. Tang Yun alternately stepped on Chao Bin's hands and feet making his bones loudly heard breaking. After becoming a cripple, Cao Bin began to shout incessantly about how much pain he was in. Watching this, Jun Wu Xiao blushed at the thought that in such a long time, Tang Yun had managed to become so strong. After finishing with Cao Bin, Tang Yun asked Danya to throw away the trash from here, and he immediately agreed. As soon as Danyu distanced himself, Jun Wu asked Tang Yun if he was afraid of repercussions, since he was still a mere disciple to which Tang Yun replied that he didn't care since someone in their division could help him with it. Then he asked why she had come. Jun Wu Xiao explained that once she was in the inner sect, all she did was cultivate, causing her to not be able to find time to check on him. But since she would be going to the eternal immortal sect in two days, she had come to see him. Tang Yun asked Jun Wu what she was going to do there. From what he knew, 
the Eternal Immortal Sect was a sect that had taken over the Land of Eternity by force. Jun Wu explained that the Huangfu Clan and the Eternal Immortal Sect had made an agreement that a competition between the three clans would determine the number of disciples that would enter the Endless Lands. Tang Yun recalled what Xiao Hei had said. The place where their clansmen would fall should be deep in Tianfa Mountain, which people called the Battlefield of the Gods and the Land of Infinity. The Land of Infinity had once been a battleground between his subordinates and the Upper World Army, so he should check this place since the souls of his subordinates might be left there. Finished with his musings, Tang Yun suggested that Jun Wu take a walk during which he would show her what was here. Half a day later, Tang Yun saw off Jun Wu, then craned his neck while complaining that shopping with a girl was much harder than fighting. Just as suddenly, Shen Qingfeng rushed over to him and immediately asked Tang Yun where he was. Tang Yun explained that a friend had come to visit him and he familiarized her with the area, after which he asked the elder what he wanted. Rubbing his beard, Shen Qingfeng revealed that they would be traveling to the Eternal Immortal Sect in two days, and therefore, he wanted Tang Yun to make preparations and meet them at the Bingqing Immortal Mountain. Tang Yun smirked, agreeing with the elder. After all, this opportunity could save him a lot of trouble. The elder ordered Tang Yun not to waste any time and said that he would go to notify the others. As soon as he left, Tang Yun smirked as it was unknown when he would be able to return, which was the perfect opportunity to kill Lu Wu. Lu Wu's cave. Lu Wu sat tiredly on his throne questioning his disciple about what had happened during his absence. The apprentice said he had news. First news, the third elder died in his own cave. Upon hearing this, Lu Wu angrily asked how the man died and who was behind it. Barely suppressing a shiver, the disciple said that the killer had not been found yet. And the second news, Tang Yun who was thought to be dead suddenly came back to life. Lu Wu was shocked at what he heard. He wanted to know how such a thing was possible. Right after that, he ran away. It was the worst, because there was a possibility that the third elder had died at the hands of the head, which meant that she was able to find out about their alliance. It was a possibility that the head had killed the elder secretly, so he should rush to his father as soon as possible. Lu Wu shouted to the disciple that he had a very important matter, and asked him to tell him that he did not know where Lu Wu was, immediately after which he flew out of the cave. At this moment, Tang Yun was making his way to Lu Wu's cave when suddenly the latter started running away. Tang Yun assumed that Lu Wu had managed to find out something about the third person's death, so he must send Lu Wu to the third person. After a while, Lu Wu continued to run away, thinking that the head might come to him at any moment, after which he would give chase. Suddenly someone's silhouette got in his way. Lu Wu was angered by this and demanded that he identify himself. In response, however, Tang Yun greeted the elder by calling him a bastard. Lu Wu asked Tang Yun what he was doing here, to which Tang Yun replied that he was going to kill Lu Wu and unleashed his aura. Lu Wu immediately said that Tang Yun would not overpower him, and looking around, he ordered the second person to come out, suspecting that it was Shen Subing or Shen Qingfeng. He was certain that Tang Yun must have someone to help him. Tang Yun called the elder an idiot, and explained that it was just the two of them here, as he didn't need help to kill someone like him. Lu Wu asked if he was really stupid enough to believe it and scanned the surroundings. But in the end, he was surprised to find that there wasn't a soul within a hundred mile radius. Tang Yun asked the elder if he had found something, because he immediately admitted that he had come here by himself, but the elder still couldn't understand it. After which, Tang Yun suggested that the elder change his name to Debil Lu. After seeing everything in person, Lu Wu began to laugh at Tang Yun's foolishness, as he was overjoyed at so easily killing someone he hated so much. Tang Yun asked the elder if he could kill him. After all, only one of them would die today, and it was clearly not an ordinary disciple. Lu Wu released his aura, and explained that as a sixth elder he was easily unable to lose to a mere disciple of the eighth level of soul cultivation, and killing such a person was not a big deal. Tang Yun chuckled, and suggested that he attack first. Lu Wu was angry at Tang Yun's arrogance, and shouted that the road to hell had already been paved for him. After which, he attacked Tang Yun, creating the image of a huge dragon, striking Tang Yun who was unwilling to dodge the attack. Immediately after which, Lu Wu started laughing. He shouted out that he would never believe in his life that Tang Yun was able to dodge at the last moment, and therefore, he was certain of his death. As suddenly, Tang Yun asked Lu Wu not to even hope for it. Once the smoke screen cleared, Tang Yun appeared in front of Lu Wu, surrounded by golden light. After the cultivation upgrade, Tang Yun's defense became a little stronger, making Lu Wu unable to scratch him with a finger. Lu Wu shouted that this was simply impossible, after all. 
higher-level cultivators were barely able to survive this attack. He wanted to understand how Tang Yun came out unharmed. Tang Yun crossed his arms and replied that it was all because Lu Wu was too weak. Immediately after that, he attacked Lu Wu by summoning fire that took the form of a phoenix and a dragon, which immediately struck Elder Lu Wu, who didn't even have a chance to dodge. And Tang Yun said that Lu Wu would now be able to feel the difference between their flames. After surviving the attack, Lu Wu admitted that he had clearly underestimated Tang Yun, but none of that mattered as he should be the winner. Immediately after that, Lu Wu created a huge array to strengthen himself and started laughing, shouting that he was now at his best and that Tang Yun should prepare for his doom. Tang Yun was disappointed in the Elder as he had expected to see something interesting from him. But in the end, Lu Wu decided to just strengthen himself at the expense of blood. But in the next instant, Lu Wu was in front of Tang Yun and shouted that this was all he needed to kill Tang Yun, then used the Blood Divine Fist. As soon as Lu Wu approached a sufficient distance, Tang Yun ordered the monkey to come out, and jumping out of the bag, the monkey asked Lu Wu how he dared to attack the master. Immediately after, the monkey repelled Lu Wu's attack by punching him on the stomach. Lu Wu was shocked by what had happened. He asked Tang Yun where he had gotten a spirit animal of such a high level. Tang Yun asked what does anyone care about this, and the monkey said that with his status as a master, he couldn't even be a servant to him. Coughing up blood, Lu Wu shouted that he wouldn't mess with Tang Yun if he only knew that he wasn't what he seemed to be. To which Tang Yun replied that it was too late to talk about such a thing, as death was coming at Lu Wu's heels. Suddenly, Lu Wu started begging Tang Yun for mercy. He swore that he would do anything. Besides, his father is the elder of the alchemy division in the immortal sect, and his master is the head of the alchemy division of the sacred sect. If Tang Yun spares him, he will be able to get anything he wants. Tang Yun began to gather energy in his fist while explaining that anyone who went against him would definitely die. He also asked Lu Wu not to think that he could die so easily. Guys, if you like this video and you want part 2, type 2000 likes under this video. Also, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and leave a comment. Until the next video.